Okay, hello, we're recording. Um, welcome to Freebooters. And um, so should we start off with the announcement? Because, you know, no one never listens to these things all the way through, do they? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, shame... Yeah, yeah. Uh, shamefully, we have started a Discord. Um, so we'll put a link for that in the description. Um, it's really just to sort of touch base with, with you know, people who enjoy the content here so that, um, you know, like you can raise topics with us or uh, you can, or, you know, like if anyone ever like wants to be on the show, it's like a mechanism for us to, to start having guests yeah. on and things like that. Um, we don't have any like solid plans for it. And, um, and I, I know it's not, it's, 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 it's not one of the Fosse standards, but Matrix is so hard to like, like Matrix. Don't like shitting on open source projects. No, but Matrix is bad. It's really it, like it, it seems from everything I've seen from like security experts, it's poorly written. It's they they didn't they do a rewrite to change the language? Like they rewrite, it, like they keep rewriting things and like you know like shifting. I've tried, to, I've installed it on a server. The resources it uses are incredible. I don't use a ton of resources. Oh, horrible. <laughs> and I mean, Discord. I mean, Discord's also horrible, but it's yes. horrible in a very self-contained packet. I can just yes. have this horribleness. It's contained. I can do mm. voice chat. I can do, you know, it's whatever. Mm. Fine. The yeah. Services. I care. I care. I care, but I care less about the mean boss. Mm. Well, the thing is, like, the alternative would be XMPP, which I like, but no, like, and it does seem to work relatively smoothly because it's a lot simpler uses a lot fewer resources but no no one really uses it whenever i've no, set up no. xmpp um uh like rooms in in the past um it will be the hardcore foss nuts which you know you know we love you guys but well, what, I, what i found definitely true for me and i think this is true for mm. most other like at least you know normal user kind of people is you want mm. one chat app. you don't want yeah. multiple chat apps open i want one chat app where i can talk to the greatest number of my friends and yeah. that's the one I'll use. I don't. I don't want. I don't want IRC, XMPP, Matrix, mm. Discord, and like flitting around. Like, I just mm. want one. Yeah, and yeah, just Discord's kind of set up for this kind of thing. In fact, I was thinking about this because, like, obviously, I feel we need we owe an explanation if we are setting up a Discord server and talking about FOSS as much as we are. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was thinking, like, I don't know if chat actually needs federation in the same way that like Mastodon needs federation. No, 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 no. No, um, that would be it's, it's rocket cause, because that's what matrix is trying to do but like with um and i suppose to a degree xmpp they just do it better but um with like is rocket chat free and open source um i, don't know. I, haven't heard of that. I think i think it, so i think but please correct me if i'm wrong that basically you install it on a server and you sign up and it's all self-contained on that server so you sign up on that server it doesn't federate with other servers it just works on the server as it does oh, it's a, it's a, it's a uh... What's the protocol called? S siloed. Activity oh. is it activity pub based chat. No, no, it's not activity pub. I don't think it's activity oh. pub. I think it's just literally they've just built a little chat a piece of chat software, and then you just deploy it. Okay, cool. It's it's, yeah. it's it's literally as simple as that. And like you sign up there, and that, you know, like because a lot of people have different profiles for different Discord rooms anyway. I really mm. don't want to call them servers, Discord servers, but like. <laughs> you know so so uh, you know like it makes sense with something like mastodon slash the fediverse because you're it, it's more like of a public forum it's it's more distributed it's more spread out and there are good reasons for that um but yeah so i don't know uh it's 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 not ideal but it's 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 what we're going to run with because it, it like a lot of people out there are already going to have discord uh but another relevant thing is that I don't need all of my chats to be uh, secure and encrypted. No, no. Whether, whether like I don't, there's, there's there's public speech and there's private speech. And if I, you know, for private speech, yes, I would like it to be encrypted. For public speech, I'm not going to go go out into the street and shout something that I don't want to hear. That's what I'm, if I'm talking on Discord, it's I I, yeah. I think of it as public speech. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course, they're scraping everything you fucking say and selling it to ad companies. And that is absolutely true and that is i don't like that but you know that's mm -hmm. true on you know the people who yeah. refuse to use discord do they also not use like the web <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, it's like you know I mean? yeah 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 um if you're going on youtube ever that's great if you're using google if you're going on youtube if you're using 
dot dot go as well, being whatever, like they're scraping the shit out of you. Yeah, yeah. It just it just sucks that like you know the on the only alternative in Matrix, and you know like it's I could never recommend that to someone that isn't nah. You know, because like Hamish has his his um his Matrix room, so I've always yeah. got like a you know I'm always up to date with it, and um. And, I don't and grudge like, anyone using it. I'm, oh, no. I'm not going to. Like, it. like if, if a decent, mm. I think the way to because Foss really starting with the GNU project, mm. um, what it's really been good at, and I don't think this is shameful at all, is cloning. You know, GNU was mm-hmm. a clone of the the Unix system tools, and then Linux was a clone of a of a Unix kernel, and so mm. on and so on. Um, make a somebody like if some somebody, the, the the current one that works for people and is popular is Discord. So make make a client. It just mm. hooks into Discord. You know, it'll be elite. it'll be against their terms and services, but mm. terms and conditions. But who gives a shit? Just make something that hooks into their APIs and you know works. Give me a better Discord client. Yeah, I mean, it'd be nice if they would let that. Yeah, they used to, didn't they? they? Used to let you have third party. I mean, there still mm. are third party clients. They, you know, they're not allowed, but they exist. Mm. I mean, I just stick mine in um, in Firefox, and and that's what I'm running right now, and that's what you're seeing here. Mm. Um, yeah. And that's okay, um, but there we go. So yeah, the Discord. We'll pop the Discord link in uh, in in the descriptions of the videos, and if you catch us on Mastodon, we'll probably put it out there. And uh, we're sorry, but uh, uh, also <laughs> lo- looking at myself in the uh, in in the window, my my hair seems to get worse and more, like more and more outrageous. Oh, I love every... it. Great. It's like a Telvan Telvani uh, <laughs> tower. Are you coming in there, or is it a light bit? Oh, grey. Yeah, and no, I've I've been okay, grey. Right. Like, nice. I've had. I've had graces for twenties. Really, my hair, my hair is still yeah. only. I mean, what's left of my hair only <laughs> has like the occasional grey bit. My beard went like my beard went grey really fast. Yeah, you know? mm, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. All right, should we crack on with the the thing oh, that that oh, spurred yeah, us on? Is it... Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, hang on a minute, Drew. You're uh, you're cutting out a little bit. Um, is your noise gate a bit high? Just before we. Uh... But um, yeah, all right. So today, this the thing that's that, that spurred on the um, the the podcast today is is that a lot of people are not Bubble too up. happy about Mozilla. Uh, uh, yeah, let, let me know if that's still bad. That should be that might be too low, but we'll see. Uh, sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. Uh, so yeah, so this this the thing that sort of made us sort of fire this this podcast up today was that that Mozilla have. Have, have have released another round of bad news uh and people just seem to be getting increasingly done with them really like really done with them now like like i see a lot more discourse in the fediverse about people switching browsers or different strategies or things like that realizing that that mozilla and firefox are just they're not going to save the open web now mm. and uh I, and actually yeah, I read... I, it's, it's, it's multi-layered for me um mm. there's the stuff there's the stupid stuff mozilla is doing but i mean mozilla mm. First of all, Mozilla really likes to present themselves as, you know, the non-profit, the foundation, mm. but it's really, it's the corporate, it's the Mozilla Corporation that owns, or the foundation owns the corporate, but the, the corporation is really what matters. They're where all mm. the employees are, they make all the decisions, and so first of all, they're not as, you know, foundation as they invite. And then they're doing stupid shit, they, you know, they're going hard into AI, they're, they're an ad tech company now, mm. so they have the exact same inherent problems that that you have with Chrome, you know, you don't want a browser made by an ad tech company. No, nope. there's all the corporate stuff, but just the browser, just, it's so fucking frustrating to be a Firefox user who like, I want to use Firefox, but they keep just doing stupid. The latest one, it was literally today. I updated mm-hmm. to one free one. I think it is. Um, and you know, there's always in the tab bar, there's always been like a, well, not always. It's a fairly recent thing, but a list all tabs button. Um, uh, not on mine because I've got the ESR. Yeah, so there's a list all tabs button, um, and you used to be able to get rid of it with. Well, this is yeah, we used to be able to get rid of it with user chrome.css. Mm-hmm. Um, at some point, they made it so user user chrome.css doesn't work anymore by default. You have to go into about config and re-enable user chrome.css. So there's that. Oh. Um, and now and then they replaced the. I used to be able to just drag it off in when you can customize the view. You used to be able to just get rid of the button. Um, so the, but they changed the button today. First of all, they changed it from a little down arrow that implies, you know, this is going to be a drop-down list to a weird icon that is essentially meaningless. 
Mm. Uh, and now you can't remove it. And it's just, I feel like every time I update Firefox, I'm fighting, like, it's, they're not big mm. things. I just want it to look how I want it to look. And it's always been that browser, right? You, you're, mm. you can configure it to your use, you know, within reason. Um, but yeah, they've made it unremovable because of something called Firefox View, which as far as I can mm. tell is something where you can synchronize uh, tabs across devices so what it does in the background is secretly keep tabs open when you think they're closed or something and the risk is that the way the way they rationalize it is that a malicious add-on could keep a tab open and make it look like a tab is closed so you need this list so that you can check what tabs you have open because the tab bar won't tell you but there's so many like wobbly parts of that like first of all i mean first yeah. of all why are you doing that secondly so i have to check this list to make sure you have to remember to check and th so they made the button unremovable on that basis so i had to spend this morning googling how to remove this fucking button again that i've already removed and it's they just keep doing stupid things I, I, but like, the thing I, is I, of course now that you've removed <laughs> that button that's a security hazard really well according to them yeah i don't understand yeah. why this firefox view like if it's just for sharing tabs across devices, just keep keep a text list of the URLs. Why do you have to keep the tab somehow in memory or loaded or something at all? I don't understand that. I mean, I'm sure there's they have reasoning for it. But the fundamental problem for me with Mozilla for the past probably ten plus years, ever since Chrome became a thing, um, is they they really and it's almost a cliche to say but they've been they've been sort of mimicking mimicking chrome trying to be the like the default one one size fits all lowest common denominator browser right mm. to try and recapture that market that chrome has taken but i think that that's such a i mean that's to me that seems like a, a stupid bad strategy people don't come yeah. back for something that's the same um and in doing and pursuing that strategy you're p p pissing off people like us who want the customizable you know the, the non one size fits all browser so it's it, it seems to be a lose lose strategy yeah and fair enough if they tried that and realized it and then gone okay we'll we'll cater to the you know the power users or whatever like that i mean i think that's what they should be doing is catering to you know i don't like the term power users but you know what i mean catering catering to the people like us with you know more specific demands but they don't do that they keep they keep trying to recapture this chrome market this, i don't know it feels now it feels like they're just seeing how quickly they can piss away their market share what's yeah, left exactly. of it i mean it's like i went on i went on the mozilla subreddit just to check you know check the, mm. the temperature or whatever um and it's just top to bottom it's just <laughs> angry posts just like what the fuck are you doing you know yeah. in various formats just what the fuck are you doing mozilla yeah and and the thing is right like going after that chrome market they're not chrome right so you know they they don't they're not they don't have the money of google they don't have the power of google the influence the extra services that google mm. have to like reinforce like the standards they want to put in so what you basically end up with is just well at best the second best browser but <laughs> in reality is it even the second best browser like you know yeah so are you, it, sorry are you getting feedback no, we're, we're okay on the side. Oh, you good? Okay, okay. I'm seeing me flashing when I'm not talking. I'm just worried that you're getting feedback. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, I think we're okay. Um, it, Discord's pretty good at weaseling out all the background stuff anyway. So, um, but anyway, yeah. So, like, it's, yeah. So, you basically end up with um, Chrome, and then you have the thing that's trying to be Chrome, but, but like, falling short. So hmm. what's most people going to choose? Who's going who's to switch back for that? Like, hmm. I, I get that, you know, they lost a huge market share, and it was kind of unfair. You know, Google used hmm. its um, its sort of ability to just push this on, on every, you know, every... I remember when Chrome first came out, you visited um, you visited Google.com, and, you know, everybody uses Google.com, you know, down to hmm. a rounding error. Um, and it would say, oh, you're not using Chrome, you're at risk of, like, this and that, you should really hmm. be using Chrome, you know, like, which is huge. That's a huge yeah. way to push a browser on people. And, yeah. and uh, you know, initially it was it was a bit faster than Firefox. Firefox caught up, but if a browser is faster, pe you know, people are going to switch at that point. It's kind of crazy that we even think about browsers in terms of speed. It's displaying a text document or maybe a playing a video. Like we don't think about we don't like if I'm uh, choosing a, a video player. Like, is it VLC or MPV? <laughs> speed isn't one of the things I tend to factor in. But for some well, reason, the thing, I mean, back in the back in the early days of, of, of Firefox, you know, Phoenix and whatever. What was it before? Firebird, Firefox, Chrome, not Chrome, uh, Mosaic, uh, Phoenix, Mosaic. Before that, of course, right. yeah. Um, I mean, it mattered back then. I think when when um, when Phoenix or whatever first came out, it was noticeably faster. 
And I think it kind of matters again now, now that pages are so fucking heavy. Like, mm. you know, your browser being being able to render all that bullshit. And make, I mean, ideally, sites would be smaller, but I know what you mean, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, I, I often... I, see, I feel a little bit uh, at cross-purposes here with, with the current, like, state of capitalism in the web, right? Like, you go into a McDonald's, they ask you for an app, right? You go into a Costa Coffee, they ask you for an app. You go into any business these days and it seems like there's some sort of loyalty scheme that's an app i don't understand i don't understand the people that install those apps one (laughs) and i certainly don't want to install those apps myself so with a lot of these these apps they do have like an online version that you can that you can access and i really appreciate that so in in on one hand i'm like okay i i prefer having to run apps through the browser because at least it means I don't have to install them on my, particularly on my phone, which is obviously, I would say, a more sensitive device than my desktop computer because it it has more, you know, personal information. It has personal messages on it. It has uh, location data and and maps and all that kind of stuff. So, um, but then on the other hand, uh, I was actually using pale moon before um uh last night just trying it out seeing seeing what was happening um and i could do like probably 90 percent of what i would otherwise do now i know that other 10 percent is probably the difference um <laughs> yeah but um yeah I, I i do hear people on 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 the fediverse trying to almost coping with this situation in so far that it's like, well, okay, okay, okay. If I maybe we don't need one browser for everything. Maybe we we can maybe maybe we can use like a a more ethical but like you know less mm. complete browser for, for for what we can, and then just dip into Chrome, dip into Firefox when we need to. But I don't know. I don't. I feel like that is one of those things that in theory sounds pleasant more pleasant but Mm -hmm. in reality you just default to the browser that can do more things right yeah yeah, it was that post today right i reposted Mm. it that essentially was making that argument and um i see the logic of it but and i kind of have been you know i was using cute browser Mm. cute browser became unusable on youtube because of lack of ad blocking so i was using firefox for youtube and cute browser for the rest of my stuff and then for anything um that i just absolutely need to work and want to keep separate i I would pop open chromium for something so i was kind of picking and choosing my browser based on what i wanted to do and i think that's kind of what they're talking about but i'm that i'm doing that to work around the shitness of all the browsers really rather Mm. than you know ideally i would have one browser and it would suit all my tasks i don't see why i see the point of why do you want the same browser on a phone than on a computer you know make a make a a desktop i mean they they use gnome web as an example and gnome web seems Mm. to integrate with with gnome very well and yeah i can see the logic of that but i don't think a browser is that sort of i mean first of all a browser needs ad block it needs very good ad blocking for me to consider you and i don't think i don't think gnome web has it, does it have add-ons at all? Does it use Chrome uh, add-ons? It add-ons? I I don't know. I can have I can have a look now. Um, but I don't. I think it has like a very limited set of add-ons or something mm. to that effect. Let me have a look now. Right. I mean, I mean essentially, it, if it, if it, uh, you, you can block most ads with a, a host-based ad blocker, right? But it's mm-hmm. those. It's the video ads. It's got to be able to block the video ads to be a usable black browser for me. A usable usable general purpose browser. Yeah. Oh, I don't so see... My position is all browsers are shit. And I mean, they were making the same point, but they were saying... So what I'm... So either... So, I mean, the web is just fucked right now. I'm kind of... I kind mm-hmm. of don't care. On one level, I'm very angry about this. And on one level, I, I don't care because the web is just such a shithole now anyway. Mm. Um. So so I'm either like, well, f- fuck the web. I'll just use the web as minimally as possible and, you know, find my entertainment elsewhere. Or wait for a, a, a viable Firefox fork. And I, for me, Pale Moon and Libra Wolf, I don't consider them viable because, first of all, they're a bit like old man shouts at Cloudy. Like they're a bit just like, oh, this is new. Take that out. This is new. Anything new, take that out. And that, that's not mm. what I want. Um, and also, you know, they're, they're not coding the browser. They are just taking what what Mozilla produces and then tweaking it. Um, if Mozilla disappeared overnight, then that. They would not be sustainable projects. Well, well, pa- pale means a hard fork. It's a what? Sorry, a hard fork. Yeah, but it, 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 it's not going. I don't because of that. I don't think it's going to keep up long term. I don't think it's not a hard mm-hmm. fork. In they take the rendering engine from Mozilla, don't they? It's not. It's not a hard fork of the rendering. It's a hard fork of the UI. Am I wrong about that? 
I don't know. I thought it, I I assumed it was a hard fork of of everything. It's just like a rendering engine is such a huge project now that I didn't think I might be wrong about that. I mean, it, it's it's not. I mean, it, it it is a rendering engine that is. You can tell its age. Mm. Um, it, there's a lot of things it can't do. Um, you go onto a lot of websites. Well, yeah, says, in that case, that's that's kind of the problem. Then, yeah, yeah. Um, that that so is. I'm, that... I'm, looking, I'm looking for the kind of fork that Phoenix or whatever it was initially called was. It, you know, that was a fork of um, was it called Sea Monkey at the time. Mozilla Sea Monkey yeah. was the browser. I think so. And then Phoenix was, uh, you know, a hard fork of that, and then it got brought brought back into Mozilla. Um, I want that kind of fork. I want an actual mm. full on fork of Mozilla that becomes, you know, the, the new standard and yeah. goes and back also... to what. It's... A fast, configurable browser. That's all I want. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> Pale Moon. I wouldn't say is is necessarily the future on the basis that, like, apparently the the lead developer is a, a bit of a jerk. Apparently, I've heard. I've, but, yeah, I've seen. I've seen that. I, yeah. I, I, I'm starting I, to I, take I, that kind of thing with a bit of a pinch. I'm not, I'm not sure unless they're a full on Nazi or actually discriminating against a particular yeah. set. You know, actually discriminating. Um, who fucking cares? It's the software. It, you know. Yeah, I mean, I would say it. It depends. It depends. Well, yeah, like it, it depends. It's more complicated than that. Like in the earlier days of Mastodon, is it, is it, is it Brave or Vivaldi that's made by the dude who's like actually homophobic and supports homophobic? Court? It's Vivaldi, isn't it? I think. Uh, no, um, Brave. It's Brave. Okay, I, like I wouldn't use that browser on that basis. Like I'm not. Mm. I'm not saying like we just. You know, turn what's the what's it? Not turn the other cheek. That's the opposite. But that we ignore. We shouldn't ignore mm. such things. But when it's just like, oh, he was a bit mean to somebody one time, which is what a lot of these things turn <laughs> out to be. Yeah, yeah, or he yeah, made yeah. an off color, off color, edgy joke that people, mm. you know, intentionally read unkindly. Um, I'm starting to, yeah, I don't care. Yeah, anymore. I mean, uh, in the uh, in the earlier days of Mastodon, when when Eugen was was making a lot more decisions about how it was going to plan out, mm. he had to make he. he, he decidedly made some like unpopular decisions that ended up being uh benefit you know like not you know i guess the right decision and um especially for the time i think na nowadays because mastodon's got that got a, is, is a lot bigger i think he's a lot more uh he, he, he takes on board a lot more stuff and i don't know if that's for better or worse but um, he gets a lot of criticism though doesn't he i've noticed the, so he much criticism. He's, he's, like Mas is he, does he run Mastodon.social and re he's refusing to uh, defederate certain sites and people are saying you know due to that he's a Nazi and stuff which I think I don't know the details of it but I think any any time you're if somebody's refusing to ban something that doesn't necessarily you know you yeah. you personally can still choose to uh, anyway that's a, mm, a huge yeah story. yeah 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 I mean there's always going to be federation drama and federation politics yeah. isn't it that's I think that's just one of the things I don't want to be like too toxic about it but like that is kind of part of the cut and thrust of the fediverse that's part of its character yeah and you've always got yeah. the option to personally defederate not defederate mm. but ignore you know you yeah you know. the um, fact that like um do, do you remember a few years ago there was this company called hive i think they've come back again but they they basically set up a corporate mastodon instance and in <laughs> And in the time, in the space of a day, they were basically bullied off the Fediverse. Um, <laughs> I love that. And yeah, like I don't know that that to me is just like oh, I wish we like remembered the day of it because we could have called it Hive Day, in, like Independence Day. It was like, <laughs> um, and it's like you know, I the these things, you know, they're not always going to be our proudest moments, but they are like events. They are things that we do, and they are part of what makes the Fediverse the Fediverse, right? Like it's it's mm. obviously not going to be all honey and roses all the time. It's it's Well I don't I don't think it's a healthy impulse to to want to never see anything that makes you at all uncomfortable. No. Like there are things that are actually offensive. There are things that are dangerous. Mm. There are things are that are actual cause actual harm. And then mm. there are things that just personally make you uncomfortable. Mm. Um whether for political reasons or for and I don't think it's healthy to never want to see that. There's times in your life if you've got, you know, if you've mm. got certain things going on in your head or whatever. Of course, when mm. you're going to personally not want to see that stuff, but to mm. to desire that a community you're on, you know, as a blanket thing, cannot possibly see those things is mm. is just so egotistical and narcissistic to me. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, but I, I do like the fact that like most most Fed verses have cut like sort of cut off the nazi mm. bit like the, oh yeah 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 absolutely the, yeah, uh, yeah yeah in fact does that even exist mm. now or does it is it is it just sort of merged into like truth social or i assume uh. there must be there must be like a nazi 
Fediverse. Do you know what I mean? Like sort of mirror a mirror universe. Fediverse. Oh, like, like, we like, just never experience. Is it like the upside down world in uh, Stranger Things? Oh see, I was thinking mirror <laughs> universe in Star Trek. You need to watch you need you need to watch more Star Trek. <laughs> I do, and we're going to get comments about it now. It's like comments to watch Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, you do hear, I do hear from time to time. Servo mentioned uh, as yeah, this possible. It's essentially, yeah, I was looking into Servo recently, and because it was, I think it was misinterpreted at the time, or at least it's claimed retroactively that it was misinterpreted because it was a, it was a, a kind of rewrite of Mozilla's rendering engine in Rust, right? And I know Mozilla, or sorry, Firefox has taken a lot of things that came out of that and incorporated mm. them into the browser. But now they say, oh, the project was never intended to replace uh, Firefox's rendering engine. And there's barely anybody working on it. It's, it's, from what I can tell, it's a virtually dead project, which is a shame because that could be, you know, because we do need a rendering engine that people can build browsers around that isn't made by fucking Google. Actually, I think you might that might be out of date information. I think there's, oh, really? there's yeah, um, because since I think since then, uh, it's been adopted by the Linux Foundation. And oh, no, it was given to the Linux Foundation as oh, just a, like, here, you take care of it kind of thing. I don't think that implies any any renewed development or anything. Could be wrong. Like, somebody who knows more about it, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to just have a look on is there is there like a GitHub or something? Yeah. Does GitHub discussions? Is that GitHub? Um, what about the blog? Oh, there's the GitHub button at the top. Uh, well, I mean, oh, well, the last commit was like five hours ago. Fair enough. Yeah. Um. Yeah. yeah. If it's still um, been worked on, then great. There's oh, it's pretty active. There's 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 quite a lot of stuff. Um. Okay, servo devs, come save us. Give us a decent browser. Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it's the it's the Mozilla MPL, the Mozilla Public License. So I'll take that, I think. I think because I think the thing about the Mozilla public license, if I remember correctly, please correct me if I'm wrong, is it's it's like GPL, but it doesn't cover the, the trademark stuff. That's my understanding. Yeah, I think it's is it, mm. it is it a, either a copy of or very similar to the Apache license, I think. I think it's related. I might, think, like again, I might be wrong. But um, yeah, like it's it, it's it strikes me as a fine license. I mean, I'm not going to be too fussy on the licenses, especially actually. No. With a more like, um, I don't know, what's the word I want to use? Like liberal license or, or a more like uh, permissive license? You've got more options for development in that case. Like I don't necessarily yeah. have a problem if if Servo becomes like a like a you know a great sort of open source fits all purposes rendering engine. I don't have a problem then with like Vivaldi adopting it for their proprietary browser. Now I wouldn't use it myself, but like fine, yeah, go no, ahead. No. You know, I mean, you know. yeah. I mean, same with um, you know, it was KHTML originally that eventually mm. became WebKit, right? KHTML, I assume, was GPL. So you know, WebKit and then Blink, that all that's all derived from a GPL uh, mm. engine, I assume. I'm, I'm, I'm I think so. Without really yeah. knowing, let's have a look. Okay, show me on what license it was. Okay. I uh, my gut kind of wants to say it might actually be something more like. Um... BSD license. Or it was it was the le the G the LGPL. Ah, right, the lesser, Which the less, lesser GNU. Yeah, yeah. Uh, discontinued yeah. browser. But yeah, um, it's it's kind of it's it's depressing. Like Firefox yeah. has always been the you know the the um the thing you retreat back to <laughs> you know the yeah. safe the safe zone, and it's just awful now. It's just Mozilla are just a shitty corporation. Yeah, um, I. What do we make of WebKit, right? So we've got we got Blink, which is the Google browser. We've got yeah. WebKit, which is the Safari engine, uh, and then we've got, we've got, of course, we've got Gecko, which is Mozilla. Well, for, for a long time, Chrome was Chrome continued to call it WebKit, right? Yeah, they took WebKit and forked it, and I, I think that's my, I think that's how it worked. And then it was continued to be called WebKit, and then at a certain point of development, they renamed it Blink. But it's ultimately it's all forks of KHTML. Yeah, which was made by KDE. Yeah, so this uh, that's an interesting little footnote that KDE has in world history, really, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for sure, yeah, yeah. But I mean, I was using uh, Qt Browser for the longest time, which uses Qt Web Qt Web Engine, I think, because it, mm. it was called it was called Qt it was Qt WebKit before, and now it's Qt Web Engine. That might be the other way around. Mm. So it's WebKit Web Engine. <laughs> 
<laughs> bling. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's all essentially the same. Yeah. yeah um, so well, a family of rendering engines. Yeah, and it's it's still WebKit, still corporate because um, it's developed by Apple, Adobe, mm -hmm. Sony, KDE, and a company called Egalia. I'm not not really familiar with them. Yeah, so I, th I think I think K Qt Web Engine or Qt WebKit, which I think is Web Engine, that is that is a hard fork, so that doesn't mm -hmm. receive any of that corporate code, is I think. So that's okay. sort of that's a safe one to use, but <laughs> yeah. Mm, but the thing is with WebKit, uh, for anyone that does use uh, Safari, will know that Safari doesn't uh, like it. You you come up against. Uh, hard limits again like there is yeah. a reason why most apple users i know still use chrome because yeah. you know it, it's it's like yeah like with safari you can do 90 percent of the stuff that you want to do on the web it's that extra 10 percent you know it's yeah yeah you know and and someone actually said something on a podcast a long time ago that kind of stuck with me about open source um which is no one wants to use the, the world's second best gps um <laughs> Because you think yeah. you think that that, yeah. that 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 puts your mind right in the spot. It's like if you're lost, you want the best GPS to get you out of that that situation. But for something that for something that has a very straightforward, like you, mm. you could you could certainly argue that Linux is the second or even third best operating system, depending on how you're coming from it. For us, mm. we we like the things that Linux do, but Linux mm. is complicated enough that it can be better for some people and worse for others. Whereas mm. a GPS, it's kind of measurable how good it is. Right? It's yeah, either, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah, although I mean, I would say I would say Linux is the best. I mean, it's on Android. Oh, they chose like it for Android. It, yeah. yeah, they yeah. choose it for Roku. They choose it for everything these days. No, I, I, so, I, Linux. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't use. Well, I could. I could just about use Mac OS, maybe. But I, 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 Linux is my preference. To be honest, like if 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 Linux disappeared, and you know, I'd go to like maybe BSD, and if <laughs> BSD disappeared, I might I might have a bit of fun with Haiku, um, <laughs> but. Uh, but but in reality, I think like if 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 Mac and Windows were the two uh, hemispheres of computing, I think I would just like take up a different hobby. I think I'd just do something different. Yeah, I think I could, I'd like to say at least Mac OS is you know underneath it all, it's Unix, so I can get a shell, I can use Vim, you know, I can use all the stuff that I want to use. So I could just I could be, I could get I could get by with Mac OS, but I probably would like withdraw from computing in general a bit. Mm. Um, if my only option was Windows, I'd just give computers up, I think. Yeah, I mean, I I kind of draw the line at adverts in your operating system. <laughs> it's just... Do you know, right, so, so I bought a new phone, uh, or when I last bought a new phone, right, I turned it on for the first time, and it just said, right, you do the basic setups, and it just says, right, now I'm going to install these apps, right? And it included, like, the Amazon app, the LinkedIn app, uh, I think mm. Netflix and Spotify, right? What on what fucking planet would I want LinkedIn <laughs> automatically installed on my phone, right? Like, I don't, how did LinkedIn get there? <laughs> uh, I mean, like, and also, like, why are you installing Amazon as well? Like, any of these, like, why are you installing the automatically? I'm perfectly capable. Of, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, You've yeah. shown me where the app store is. Like that was that was um, that was Windows on laptops back in the day. Maybe even still, it was it was like the bundled soft people. You know, companies would pay yeah. them to bundle software, and I yeah. assume it's the same deal, right? Oh my God, no one would voluntarily put LinkedIn in their operating system, right? <laughs> oh my God, I I've went on LinkedIn. Um... Oh. You know, <laughs> sorry, right? Go I went on LinkedIn the other day. It's fucking insane. It's like. I've never seen so much toxic positivity about employment in my <laughs> life. It's it's horrible. Like the 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 sort of the things they say they're true. Only psychopaths post on on LinkedIn. And I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, there's a great Reddit. Uh, it's called um, Link. I think it's like LinkedIn lunatics or something like that. And it's just like you know screenshots of the best of of, of LinkedIn. And it's like, oh my god, oh my be, fucking be, god. Be. Being unemployable, it's a site that I rarely encounter, but when I do, it's such a weird and bad website. It's a bad, awful... They, basically, they, they just trapped people into believing that this is where you need to be if you want to get hired, right? And it's like, it serves no purpose other than that. And it's yeah. sort of holding people for ransom. But I remember oh, like, back in the yeah. very early days of LinkedIn, like I heard about it, I was like, oh, I'll sign up, see what it's about, because... 
back then a new website like that was kind of exciting right you know, <laughs> remember google, google wave came out and we all anyway yeah so i signed up for it i've never had more spam email in my life from a, oh, from a it's website terrible for that i yeah, actually man, i think I th- it was it was literally several several emails an hour kind of thing it was yeah. ridiculous yeah 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 and um i think i think there might even have been a class action lawsuit about that um which which i hope there was like but uh yeah like and, and and i logged on like for the first time in like a year or something the other day just to just to update my cv give it a bit of a polish update the profile picture because you know long hair and um <laughs> and and from that moment i got like i don't know like the next following couple of days i just got so many emails because i obviously mm-hmm. like re-triggered it into mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and it's like come on this is like microsoft you're not a shady well you're not like one of those shady companies that tries to you know like... think recently not as not to the same extent linkedin is is amazing for how much spam it sends um i i remembered that i'd signed up for letterboxd ages ago What's which that? is basically just it's just keep track of like movies and and rate mm-hmm. them kind of thing and it's, it's like that can be useful let's have a list of like you know when somebody's like asking for a film recommendation or something i'm like all right fine um, and I just I just went back and logged in and poked around and I was like I don't like this UI this is a bit shitty and just back back out and then for the for the next like week I got like three emails a day from them going I, you, I, I don't know. just because I'd logged in I was getting the spam emails trying to get me back there um, I, just, I mean I could have gone in and gone in through the settings and go you know don't email me don't, about this don't email me about that I just deleted my account I couldn't be fucked yeah. like, any site that emails me like that now I'm just I can't just fuck off. No, it's. It, I don't know what this is, right? Like, I, I, I. In theory, I'm not like opposed to receiving emails about things like, oh, is there a special offer on or something like that. But the trouble is, is that every single time, every single time, it's just abused. It's just absolutely mm. abused. Yeah. Um, and I yeah. always end up subscribing to it and uh, un- unsubscribing because it, it, you know e- either they they're one of those like companies where it's like oh you have a sale every other week so it's like a DFS kind of situation mm. or uh, that's a British reference by the way and um, or um, sell furniture yeah 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 so like um, or 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 basically they're just giving you like a daily newsletter like why do I want it like. <laughs> I don't understand. Do these things just like come up in a meeting and like no one gives a shit about like like I used to you uh, like I used to I used to be a web dev or web designer mm-hmm. as we were back then. Uh back before it became like what it is now. I, I was freelance and I would tend to work for web design agencies. They would just hire me to, you know, do like I, I did both design and coding and anyway. So I, I ended up working on some, you know, very big websites for some very big corporations, you know, like uh, Sony, EMI, uh, it was a lot of music, like Virgin, you know, big companies, right? And I'd be in the meetings where they were saying, you know, what we want, what kind of website we want. And uh, it was like in the 2000s, 2010s maybe. And they'd always say, oh, and we need... um." We need uh, we need a like a, a text field where people put their email addresses. We want to collect email addresses, uh, which always meant basically the rest the rest of the site was fairly simple. And then you've got to have this interaction thing that puts the email addresses into a database. Um, so we, like, every site I made databases of thousands of email addresses, <laughs> and I know for a fact they never did anything with them. They just got it into their heads that like we need to collect email addresses. They never touched them. They never used them for anything. I mean, they do now. But yeah, back it's just this this yeah. As soon as as soon as they get something into their corporate little tiny little fucking heads, yeah, just, yeah, it's like AI do it to excel. You if you AI, if you were doing it now, they'd be like, okay, I want a website, and then I want some AI in it. Throw some throw some AI yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what. Right, The Simpsons did the best episode about this when Homer starts his IT company, um, and it, it hits on shit like this so much, like. Um, What's he, he calls it like mega infrastructure corporation or something, and it's like, ooh, they have the internet on computers now. <laughs> Is that that's an older one, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it's an older rings one. Of, rings um, of Rings of Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and to be honest, like I know The Simpsons has gotten like shit after season nine, is it? Um, but some of the older ones, they're definitely worth going back and have a look to if you've got some spare time because the, actually the, the political commentary on them is is pretty interesting. You know, it, you know, is one of those things where it's it's. Because it was huge at the time, right? It was massive. Mm. Um, and then it, it became very highly regarded. Mm. Um, to excess, I think. I think it was too highly regarded. 
and it's been going for so long that the next generation came along and sort of, you know, uh, reacted contrarianly to that and sort of then mm. undervalued it. I think it's overvalued by people our age and then undervalued mm. by people younger than us. It's, like, <laughs> it's actually somewhere in the middle. It, it was because it get it was called subversive a lot back in the day. And people look back now and go like, it's not, it's not really that, you know, it's not subversive, it's not really doing much, you know, politically, blah, blah, blah. But they're judging it. It had such an influence on everything that came after it. They're judging it on mm. that basis. And also when people say it was subversive, I think they mean more it was formally subversive. Mm. You know, it was, it was a cartoon that was a sitcom that would usually have been live action. And there, there really hadn't been anything like that before. And mm. that's the sense in which it was subversive. Yeah, but it also not, not like... politically subversive. It was a little well, I... bit edgy. But uh, what what were the was it like the Brady Bunch that it was sort of like it was the yeah, was it like kind of, precursor yeah, or, kind of um, thing? What was the one that Michael J. Fox was on? That was probably more Oh god, that's before my time. Family ties or something like that. But yeah, there's a bunch of those very sort of saccharin um yeah. family sitcoms, right? I mean the the mm. modern version is what's it called? Out My Family, something family. Oy, there's a mod there's a modern one that's very much that. Modern family? Modern Family, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. I've heard that. I've heard. I've heard those two words go together before. I exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I there was also back in the, there was Roseanne, which I think was roughly contemporary with The Simpsons, which was because hmm. again for America, not not the case here so much, but for America, they were the first uh, sort of sitcoms about a working class family because you know sitcoms were always were very like optimistic and they wanted to make you feel good, so they're always about hmm. very affluent. I mean, sometimes they were sort of characterised as working class but they lived in like mansions essentially yeah. you know <laughs> yeah but it also and I, I wonder about this about america if this is a cultural difference between the countries because america's obviously physically bigger mm. um they 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 typically have bigger houses and 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 they have a lot more like single story buildings like the idea of building a house that's a single story today without a specific <laughs> like oh it's just to help older people because they tr struggle with that was that. always interesting like, with neighbors right hmm? Neighbors, the, neighbors, the, oh, the, the architecture, the house, yeah, the houses were always interesting. I think they were they, they often oh. had the um, they had the uh, like the the sleeping was downstairs and the living was upstairs and stuff. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, was always, that was always interesting to me. Uh, is it because yeah. like uh, yeah? Is it because like the having the bedrooms lower is cooler because hot air I rises? Assume, or I don't know. Yeah, but I'm just, I don't even know whether that's a common thing in Australia or it's just a neighbors thing. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But um, I'll tell you what, right? I don't know if you've seen it, but what is it? A surprisingly good modern sitcom, if it is a sitcom that's a little bit subversive, is um, Ted, the sitcom. The Talking Bear thing. The Talking Bear. I know that the particularly the second film was pretty bad. Um, and the first film was like standard Seth MacFarlane slop. But um, the actual sitcom itself... Pretty good. I've, had several, I've actually had several people recommend mm. that. It is the Seth, it's the Seth, it's the Seth MacFarlane ness that puts me off, honestly. Um, it it kind of works. It kind of mm. it is there, but because the thing is because it's because they're younger, it it suits it more, right? Because Seth right. MacFarlane humor is very like immature, yeah. but the the kids are younger. Yeah, no, it's it's really good because it is a bit subversive, but not in a edgy way. In a way that it revisits the old style of sitcom. And it's a bit more honest about it. And there's a, mm. there's not to give too much away, but there's a um, a scene I think in the final episode where like the the patriarch of the family kind of breaks down and he says, "Look, I, I fucking went to I went to Vietnam. I fought a war for 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 what I thought was my country, and it turned out we were the bad guys." And it's like, <laughs> yeah, that's you know, like, and I've got PTSD <laughs> for being for being for being for doing something wrong. Villain. Yeah. 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 It's no, like, cool. yeah. Yeah, I, mean, yeah. I was going to say with Simpsons, like what, where I end up is I, I've got very ambivalent feelings about the Simpsons. Like, mm. you meet those people who are a bit too into. This is again definitely think mm. a feature of my generation. Those people are just a bit too into the Simpsons, and yeah. they're fucking. I mean, it's often the case, but fucking insufferable. I don't want like the Simpsons yeah. isn't that good. Don't base your whole fucking life around it. No, and so I, so when when somebody brings the Simpsons up, I'm like, oh god, fucking Simpsons. But <laughs> yeah, those those. Some of those early episodes were fucking amazing. They were very yeah. good television. Yeah, um, the, the monorail ones. Watch, good. You want to say? Yeah, the monorail one's great. <laughs> yeah, my, my probably one of my favourite jokes in anything ever is when Homer sends an angry letter to Mister Burns. I'm, I've probably mentioned mm -hmm. this before, and then regrets it, and he wants to go and get it back. So he goes to the yes. post office. Mister Scrub, <laughs> he goes, "Hello, 
I'm Mr. Burns. And then the person behind the counter says, what's your, what's your, what's your first name? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember watching that for the first time when I was like 10 or something, and I fucking died. Yeah. yeah oh my God. Yeah, I don't, yeah. do you know, right, I hope this isn't too sad, but like, I, I don't laugh like I used to laugh when I was a kid in my adult years oh, you know, no, you, no, no, you'd no. used to see yeah. I, when i was on a school trip okay this is this is horrible it was to germany lovely i think it was somewhere near bonn somewhere along the the, the rhine and um we were walking along this path and there was this uh cyclist that was trying to edge by and um he he, he fell off the path into the river and <laughs> and but here's the thing and here's the thing here's the kicker right we didn't hear a splash because there was just this random like pile of rocks that he landed on. So he didn't even go splash into the river. He landed on this random pile of rocks and was like, oh, oh and it Jesus. was like, oh my God. Like I couldn't, I mean, I wouldn't laugh at that night as an adult because of anything no, no, and stuff, no, no. but like, oh my God. Yeah. Like, like, yeah, I, I, I watch it. I don't watch a ton of comedy stuff, but you know, I watch some comedy stuff and when it is striking that when you're on your own, you're like, mm. In your head, you're like, that's fucking hilarious, but you don't yeah. laugh. Yeah, Whereas totally. watching with people, you know, I watch things often with, with people. You, you, We've talked about this. You, you're not so keen on that. But yeah, when you're watching with people, every little thing that's funny, you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Like laughing is such a social thing. So when you mm. are watching something on your own and it makes you laugh out loud, you look, that is really funny. But there's different kinds mm. of funny as well that's sort of cerebrally funny where you can go, that mm. is fucking hilarious without it registering at all. Yeah. And then there's just like the gut laugh, the response. Mm. I've been watching, I mentioned it to you, I've been watching On Cinema at the Cinema. It's another thing mm. that I've come to <laughs> late. I've just discovered it. Um, and there's one, they do they do the opening, you know, the, the opening bit where it's mm. like this, you know, it just sort of slides across the screen. He's like, this is, yeah. this is five bags of popcorn. This is a great film. And mm. one of them, he says, um, when you've got movies like Tom Cruise in them, you can't lose. <laughs> and the first time I heard that, I just I burst out laughing. That is that is just so perfectly my kind of when you've got movies like Tom Cruise in them. It's fucking genius. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it, that is good actually because I love that that sort of stilted. Um, <laughs> that yeah, like it, it's horrible yeah. to watch. Like so one of the YouTube comments I mentioned to you just described it as like it, like watching it is like mm. purgatory. And that's bang on. It's just an awkward, awful, uncomfortable thing to watch. But it, I'm, yeah. I'm addicted to it. It kind of, yeah, it's got like, I'm a sucker for like bad green screen humor as well. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah there's a bit, it's like, a bit bad, like bad editing, like intentionally yeah. bad editing. I fucking adore like Red Letter Media do that very well as well. Yeah, yeah. And you can um, take it too far and it becomes silly. And you know, yeah, you, it's, it's, it's plausibly bad editing that, that is hilarious for some Threading reason. the needle, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I, one of the ones that, that actually has made me laugh quite a lot for very silly reasons. So this <laughs> is um, a channel for comedy called, called Staff Let's Flats. Um, and I think he, it, it's basically, it's very like, I think it's Cypria or Greek. I can't remember now. I think it's like, is it like a Greek from Cyprus or I don't know. There's, there's, there's some sort of, it's very Greek style humor, um, oh. which is kind of like very loud, very silly, um, very slapsticky. And um, yeah, if you, it's on channel four, it's on four OD if you're in the UK. Mm. Um, but it's, it's just, it's silly slapstick like that. And, and it's, it's, it's got the, the reason I thought about it is because it it, it it has that very bad green. You see a lot in Europe, actually, like really bad green screen. Um, <laughs> whenever like, whenever yeah, I go into, yeah. whenever I go abroad and um, yeah yeah and on, on cinema and the cinema does a ton a ton of the uh, mm. yeah the, the bad green screen. Yeah, I'm gonna just sort my light out a little bit because the sun's right right outside my window. You now. were you were literally. Word, like luminescent compared luminescent. to my, I love, I love the heaven hell. Yeah, <laughs> you know, really enjoy that. Yeah, yeah, we've got the the color. I got to be honest, I love, I love the green in the. The green's beautiful. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I was doing. Um, paint, the reason I did you paint, did you paint your light switch or is it actually gray? Uh, no, it's actually gray. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's. Um, it looks but... like. I'm sorry. I'm. <laughs> 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 Is it a very old light switch? It looks like the old ones with the actual flip thing. Rather no, than no, just it's a... it's oh, just okay. just slightly alternative design. But um, what the reason I kind of wanted to paint it a proper color 
was because I was doing a driving awareness course and um, there were like, I don't know, like 20 of us on a Zoom call, you know, and it's basically punishment by pres PowerPoint presentation. And um, and it literally was. It's like, look, you're going to have to sit through a three hour pre PowerPoint presentation with some audience participation. And that's how you avoid getting points on your license. I was like, fine, fine. OK, but just um, for running three people over. Jesus. Just running three people over, I know. It's, it's state, political, oh, political correctness gone mad. Danny State, yeah. So, um, but basically, one thing I kind of noticed was that every single person had a beige wall behind them, and I'm mm. thinking, wow, we are a boring country full of it's boring like what we were talking people. about the other day uh, about cars. Like every car mm. is is like 99 like of cars are silver and then occasionally mm. a white and black one and that's basically mm. all you've got it's, yeah why 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 it's because no one wants to stand out anymore no one wants to express themselves anymore it's just like you we got to put color in the world we got to put color back in the world right it, it, it's kind of like what i've been yeah, thinking I, I, I do have an odd relationship with this because I, I like mm. part of me is very much in favor of uniformity like like mm. you know being being overly concerned with your external presentation to me is a bit like you know like to me you know some somebody really goes over the top to to go like look what an interesting person i am with their appearance mm. is like you know that's going to be a fucking boring person <laughs> and so I, I kind of lean the other but then yeah when when every fucking car is essentially great like shiny gray like mm. come on let's put some color back in the fucking world yeah 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 like it's 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 kind of like something that I've I've learned like dealing with depression is that like you kind of do have to like make an effort to put joy in the world mm. like it's mm. it's not not easy but it's totally worth it like joy isn't just going to manifest itself and and I think the world needs joy more now than ever ever and I think there are a lot of people just waiting for joy to come along and it's uh, like we've we've all yeah. got to collectively yeah. just Make, no, it extends, make joy to, it extends to interiors as well. Like every fucking mm. everybody's interior looks the same, and it's all like just the same IKEA furniture, the same fucking mm. coloured wallpaper, and just have some fucking individual creativity. Yeah. You like don't just please do something. You, you know, I mean, it, yeah. it, it, this is very much into being a Linux user. You know, rather than accepting the default, we want to tailor our mm. operating system perfectly for how we want to use it. It's the same. Just just make things yours rather than. Just accepting off the shelf yeah. things. It's so cool. I I have come to loathe IKEA deck like pictures, furniture, so. decor. Like I w whenever I stay in an Airbnb, they're always like decorated with the basic IKEA stuff. And it yeah. and it's just yeah. like you've walked into a like a movie set, you know, or like a TV yeah. set. Like it's it's yeah. a generic yeah. Yeah. or you know, uh, and it would be um, fine if they weren't all fucking identical. Mm. It's, yeah. Like go to, go to like the, I mean, I mean, like bric a brac shops must still exist, right? Just you know, like yeah. charity shops have kind of taken them over a lot. But just a shop where you can go in and get like a nineteen thirties nineteen thirties utility table or dresser or whatever. Much rather, I mean, first of all, it'd be so much better made, even the utility stuff. Yeah. Like it was so well made compared to IKEA stuff, and and just it looked a bit more interesting. Yeah, yeah, and, and also. Cheaper. I I gotta be honest. I think there's something to be said for like have a go at making your own furniture. Like oh, yeah, even if even if it's time. a bit shit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, the thing is, like, whenever I get into a slump, I usually try a crafting project, and it's often mm -hmm. woodwork, and it's always always helped. Right? It's certainly never made it worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you've oh, got yeah. a bit of you got you got a bit of physical labour. You know, like you, your hand saws and your, yeah. your, your stuff. You know, so you, no, you're, you're sort yeah, of doing, yeah. doing, doing creative stuff is like fundamental to what we are mm. as humans. And like, I mean, yeah. like, th there's a bit of privilege here because you know there's mm. people who literally do not have time for it, and that's mm. the, the problem. There, you know, the problem is capitalism. You know, again, you know, single single mother of three who's working two cleaning jobs, and you say, "Oh, you should do a crafting project." So like, go oh, fuck yourself, mm. yeah. um, and right, so. But yeah, the, the, we, life should be geared far more around that. About it, you know, rather than defining ourselves and our, our individuality and creativity based on what we purchase, it should be mm. based on what we what we do, what we make, what we create. And what, I'm using create in the very broad sense, you know, mm. knitting or you know, like coding, like whatever you wanna, whatever yeah. you wanna do. Absolutely, yeah. Like, and and also, like, that's why we have invented agrarian society, right? Like, if we didn't want to create <laughs> things, time, yeah, yeah, we we would still be hunter gatherers. You know, that would be yeah. the 
No. So it's it's you know and and it's it's you know the fact that you took you know like you got single mother three kids you know underwater type of thing that's a failure of capitalism or that's a that's a failure of yeah, society. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, no, like absolutely, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't even know if it's system specific. It's just like society is not help is is not helping that woman if if. No, no, yeah, no. Yeah, that's that's you know, what I, yeah, that's what I meant in making yeah. that point. Yeah, it's, it's society is structured incorrectly if we, we're valuing mm. the wrong things. Yeah, you know? absolutely, absolutely. And like, do you, you know, um, you know, those like I was thinking about this the other day, right? I, one thing I think is is possibly like might be behind like an inc like an in not an increase in selfishness but like a a justification for selfishness is, is that like like i think a lot of cases when people like do things for their family like a lot of the time they consider that like helping others rather than helping themselves right whereas like <laughs> yeah. if you think of the family as a family unit helping your family yeah. is is helping your is is not in a bad way but a selfish act mm. and and helping your community or helping strangers is mm. a more selfless act. But I think that we've 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 changed it into well, that's, you know, that's that right. There's, there's no such mm. thing as society. There's there's the individual and there's the family. Like mm. the, that's, you, the broadest you can think of in terms of a community is your family. So yeah, doing something for your family feels like commu you know communality, which isn't mm. you know it's like on a very small scale. It is of course, but think bigger than that, please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's 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 like I I mean I I'm not going to have children and you know that's that's largely a choice I think there could have been you know if my path had taken a different route there could have been certain circumstances that would have changed but fundamentally I never had the enthusiasm for it so I I've always wanted kids yeah I'm mm -hmm. like sad. sadly never going to happen but I would so, love to would love to have kids, love kids mm, yeah but it's it's like um it's like I I don't I don't want the world to end when I die you know it's not like you know, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I don't not want to have kids on a, on a, on a selfish basis. I still want the world to like thrive for people that I've never met, and um, and I, I'm going to sound like such an egotistical thing, but I, I wish that was the, the the conventional way of thinking. I guess you know, yeah, that yeah, yeah. the, the fundamentally a stranger is as valuable to the world as you, and I don't, I don't think. Yeah, we, no, we absolutely, see that. absolutely agree. I, th I think something that's been very damaging in that regard, like, like going back to the previous thing a little bit, is um essentially that like personal mobility mm. um you know back back in the day where you know your family lived in a town you know your cousins lived in the same town your grandparents mm. lived in the same town and when you you know you you grew up you would get a house in the town and you know mm. then there was a sense of like you inherently there's a sense of responsibility there like mm. if your behavior is bad it doesn't just reflect on you it reflects on your whole family and they're gonna mm. you know <laughs> do something about that um yeah and no, i i was i was on um uh i'm the main character reddit mm -hmm. subreddit which is just people behaving in that particularly mm -hmm. egotistical selfish way and it's yeah it's just so, so, so yeah yeah the, the mobility is like people mm -hmm. go like you know getting to 18 going off university getting a job mm -hmm. and then you know moving somewhere else you know london here mm -hmm. um so there's not that sort of communal communal rooting there's that not not that rootedness and, and sense of mm -hmm. like generational responsibility which gives you so many reasons to do good things for your community that's just it's gone people don't know you know it, mm, you sound yeah. like an old man but people, people don't know their neighbors even that's totally i you know i'm totally on board with you and i think that's one of the most like agreeable things that that's the sort mm. of like wrong how, today how because can you get back to that without restricting people because the mobility in itself isn't a bad thing like people should no, be able to go where they want so how, how do you yeah. have how do you square that circle i don't know i i don't know as as well but i because the, the thing is like i'm i'm in a small town and most of the people that I grew up with had to move to cities for work reasons. It's it's so mm. it, it, maybe it's centralization of the economy uh, strikes again. Mm. You know, yeah. Which, yeah, yeah. You know, it, yeah. It, it would it would be nice. Like we have, like my my town went from being a market town back in the medieval times to basically now being a, a massive suburb with a high street, which is failing, yeah. which is dying, yeah. which is true of, true of so many towns, right? Yeah, yeah, and 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 I, I mean, my my town doesn't even have a lot of the big chains. Like, literally, cannot buy a pair of pants in mm. in 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 my my town. That's that's sort of my dad's like measure of like how why how, when the high street failed was when <laughs> no, it's you a know. Good yeah, yeah, no, it's a good measure because it's no, like I, I, I live in a little. I mean, I'm agoraphobic because you know I go outside mm. like incredibly rarely, maybe like twice every decade, and when I do mm. when I do mm -hmm. go out into the street, like people will just go like, "All right, Drew." 
And I'm like, who the fuck are you? <laughs> yeah. Who are you? How do you know who I am? But it's kind of nice. It's like, yeah, you know who I am. Apparently, that's nice. Yeah, no, I, I, I do absolutely love the people that have stalwartly, you know, like sort of tried to keep the the, yeah. the community here. I think as well, house prices. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Affording a house in the town I grew up in, grew up in, is is so difficult. I mean, I think probably borderline impossible if you're single. Um, and it and it's like so so what you know what are my choices? Like, do I do I go into a city or do I you know? Mm-hmm. Which is what a lot of people do go for, go for. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's better paid job. Than because, housing. Like, if you live where your family lives, that you've got a huge mm-hmm. inbuilt support network as well. You exactly, know, you, yeah. you know, if you need, you know if you need childcare or you know, it's all mm-hmm. it's it, it's communality. I mean. Of course, there's pe- there are people who had upbringings where you know they don't want to live with their family for very valid reasons. I'm not saying everybody should want this, but definitely something. Yeah, something's been- can I? Um, yeah, before I forget and we end it, mm-hmm. can I um, whinge about gnome a bit? Yes, yes, I was. Uh, yeah. Okay. So the whole the whole backstory is uh, you you linked me that um, uh, Morrowind interactively YouTube thing, and I watched a bit mm-hmm. of that, and that made me want to play Morrowind. So uh, mm-hmm. I was using OpenMW under uh, uh hyperland and in hyperland it's got this bug where whenever you open and close when you close your inventory your camera moves which is really annoying in morrowind uh, when you close your inventory your camera moves but only on hyperland but only on hyperland yeah so wow. what it was what doing thing? is uh, so if i put the mouse in the top left hand corner when the inventory was open and then closed it it didn't do it because in that position is zero zero, so it's basically however far I was across the screen when I closed the inventory, the camera was updating and moving that much. Okay, but only in Hyperland. <laughs> so Hyperland's right. rendering something. I don't even understand what was happening there. So I was like, well, I've been kind of toying with the idea of going to GNOME anyway. Let's go over to GNOME, and it was fine on GNOME. Uh, and I, I kind of like GNOME. I like, I like, you know, with a couple of extensions, I like the way GNOME works. Um, I was kind of happy with it, and then I used the screenshot tool, and that was a bit of a pain in the ass. So I was like, well, I can just use the scripts that I've made for Hyperland to take screenshots. But no, because of the way Wayland is designed, those those screenshotting tools, they're written for the WLR compositor, which is the one Hyperland shares with Sway and other projects. So so they don't they literally so a screenshotting tool for Wayland doesn't work on Wayland, it works for whatever compositor you're using. Which is fucking insane. That's Wayland's mm. stupid fucking design coming to the forefront. Right. So, but fine. Whatever. <laughs> Just mm-hmm. I lived with the screenshotting tool. Um, but then I had a problem where my mouse cursor was too big on the GNOME apps, right? I'm like, mm-hmm. so GNOME filed my mouse cursor. As soon as I moused over it, my mouse cursor would get bigger. And I had this before in Hyperland, and I just had to set an environment variable to say what size the cursor is, which is what apparently what GTK reads to set the cursor. I don't, I don't know why this was happening in GNOME's, GNOME's own applications in GNOME. So I was like, okay, I'll set that I'll set that environment variable. Went, went to uh, Z profile or whatever where that's set, and it was already set. So I was like, okay, that's odd. Uh, so that I looked a bit deeper, and the GNOME applications in GNOME are installed via Flatpak, which I didn't uninstall. So when you install GNOME, Flatpak is a dependency, and then all the GNOME built-in apps are installed via Flatpak. Without so, hang telling on. me. So then I would have to fuck around with all Flatpak nonsense to go in and set that anyway. So at that point, I was like, fuck it, I'm going back to Hyperland. So... So GNOME or GNOME is now on Arch at least, like it it, it is a flat pack app. Yeah, because it's got its own software thing. And I was like, I want I want I always wondered how that worked. Like it tells you like, oh, you can update this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, what's it plugging into? Like, does it just plug into whatever package? No, it's just using fucking flat pack and telling you that you can have a newer version of the file browser or whatever. Yeah, it's it's using flat pack, which I don't want flat pack. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and it is, it is this. I mean, that's always been the direction of GNOME. It's very red hatty. It's very um, uh, what's the what's the, the desktop standardy stuff that always gets in the way when you're the free trying desktop. To do anything. Or... <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah, all that stuff. You know, the uh, standardizing on dot dot desktop files on on mm-hmm. a on a system that doesn't need those. And a lot about it irritates. Anyway, I've just got very irritated. 
um, and, and, and yeah, it installing Flatpak on the sly without me knowing when I don't want to use Flatpak was the last straw, and I went, I went back. Mm. And it's frustrating because fundamentally, I like the way it works. Yeah, I was actually, I was, I was thinking about this ever since you said you were going to go over to, to GNOME, and I was thinking, look, I like XFCE, but there's probably going to come a day where it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't keep up with what it needs to keep up with, right? Maybe mm. it, it might not make the jump to uh, uh, to Wayland, or maybe there'll be something else that comes along that that, that knocks it into in, into touch. Which so so what would be my backup option? And I'm thinking, well, KDE is 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 pretty good actually, and it's always been relatively lean. It's always worked. It's always just done what I needed it it to do in the way that you'd expect it to work. Um, but then I was thinking, well, you know what's really the problem with gnome like you know there's a few like little things that i think are changeable i could i could probably live without the system tray the trouble is some applications insist on having a system tray presence and don't work without I mean, gnome, it. gnome does gnome does now have something that does what the system tray does i'm sure okay well in I that case has, yeah does it have minimize buttons and stuff i think you can have minimize buttons but they don't really I mean, this is it goes back to the yeah the early days of GNOME Shell. They were like, there is nowhere to minimize to. Is what they were saying. But mm. um, yeah, I think you can still minimize. Yeah. Well, it minimizes the dock now. I think I think I think you can do it even without GNOME tweaks. Um, I think you just do. It. But GNOME tweaks is like, is that official or somewhat official? Is it included in in repos and stuff? I don't know. I had it installed, but I don't, I don't know whether it's official or not. Um, yeah. But it, I mean, the, the uh, thing about GNOME is they all go like KDE is going for you can configure the shit out of it, do what you want with mm -hmm. it. We'll give you every configuration option you want. GNOME is the absolute opposite of that. It's like it's we're, we're making well one way. There's one way to use it, and yeah, you can you can install extensions, but fundamentally, yeah, it's it's a more it's it's very Mac mm -hmm. OS in terms of how it works. I I, I can understand that because you know it, for a lot of. Um, you know, newer newer users, they're going to be used to screenshot tutorials, right? And mm -hmm. you kind of need a standard uh, layout for that to work. Um, I can see the argument. Yeah, we've always got by without that, but fine. Yeah, like it, I, I think, I think the ship has sailed on on the year of the Linux desktop. Uh, <laughs> in so far that like. You know, if someone if like if someone I know starts complaining about adverts and Windows and stuff, I'll I'll uh, you know pop them onto Linux Mint, and everyone who I've done so has actually been very happy with Linux Mint. Mm -hmm. uh, it just it just seems to work, and life goes on. Um, but like I could understand that that's like th there's more at play here, right? Like Windows comes pre-installed on on computers. That's the thing. Um, you know, most most advice when you Google is going to be for Windows, all that kind of thing. So. Um, so I I don't know, but I do I suppose I do appreciate that there is is an option for it. Um, no, I think yeah, I'm I'm fine with the desktop taking that approach of like we we're, we're just going to you know we're going to do it one way and it's it you know yeah. it's well yeah we're going to do it. I'm absolutely fine with that. I don't I don't object. To it. I actually quite like that about GNOME. Honestly, I don't want all the mm. configuration. I want to be able to configure what I want to configure, but I don't want an option for everything. I don't want. I mean, I'm trying to get away from jank. I'm trying to get away. I'm trying to get to like something a bit simpler where I don't have to think mm. too hard about everything. But it was it was the flat pack thing and the messiness with the cursor and you know the, just. I mean, this is the Wayland thing, but the screenshot like screenshot tools being compositor specific, like yeah. And so that's when I started thinking: w Would I be better off on X? And in every the the reason I'm on Wayland is because you know it is the future. Like I'm going to be on Wayland eventually, so I might as well be on Wayland now. Um, it, you know, it supports things like VRR. It supports uh, I don't know a lot of monitor stuff that I don't care about because it doesn't apply to me, so I don't need it. Mm -hmm. But just in terms of functionality, I would be better off on X. So I just I keep thinking like like DWM is the best window manager I've ever used. I didn't have any problems on X. Everything worked perfectly. Things that don't work on Wayland, like um, screen capture on Discord did work on X, like, should I just go back to X? And I can't think of a reason not to, really, other than this sort of abstract, well, Wayland is the future. Yeah. I'm actually quite surprised when I talk about it, how many people are uh, are on Debian XFCE, for, prob for presumably those same reasons. That It is the most straightforward of distributions. My gosh, I am so washed out. So washed out. <laughs> I've, been, I've been like a freaking mime for the whole... 
for the whole episode. I'm sorry about that. Um, so, but yeah, like, uh, sorry, what was I saying? Um, yeah, I'm surprised how many people have like sort of followed the same route that I have in in mm. in choosing Debian XFCE, which is like the most dinosaur distribution. But <laughs> I've had no issues with it. Zero issues with yeah, it. Um, yeah, yeah. And imagine that cursor thing that I got in GNOME. I think if you install GNOME on Debian, I don't think you get that. I think that's Arch being Arch being Arch. You know. Um, and and I, the the I you know you, you you I don't I would like to see yeah I would like to see if in the Debian GNOME whether or not it does do the flat pack thing because. It kind of sounds like that would go against Debian's principles. I think that do you, I, I think, think that's think... inherent to I think that's inherent in GNOME. Unless I'm misunderstanding something, that seems to be inherent to how GNOME works now. It install it installs its own apps as Flatpak. As far as I could tell, I mean that's the only reason I could think of why the cursor thing wasn't working. And Flatpak was definitely when I went to um, uninstall it, I just noticed that Flatpak was installed. I was like, I didn't install Flatpak, and then yeah, realized mm. it was a dependency of GNOME. I, I I'm not okay with that. No, give me I... the option or something, but. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not anti flat pack, but like, I, it's a, it's a, it's a big thing to like have as just a dependency that isn't, mm. isn't sort of needed for it. Like, sh should I, like, I'm asking you now, should I go back to X? Everything worked better on X than it does on Wayland. I mean, I'm on X and I've got no issues. Yeah. So, and you're you on, know, a, you're on, because, and part of it was like, because I got my, my NVIDIA graphics card blew up and I got a very shit. AMD card, and I was like, "Well, at least I get to try Wayland now." You know, the, the, you know, AMD works very well on Wayland. It seems like if you're on AMD, you should be on Wayland, kind of thing. That's what, what I was thinking. But yeah, in every in every measurable way, X was better for me. And also, Pipewire versus Pulse. Pulse just works better. Pipewire is still ropey as fuck. I I don't even know what I've got if it's in in in, in Debian. To be honest, um, it it just works. I, it, I imagine, it, you're Pulse, yeah. I imagine you're, on, you're on X and you're on Pulse Audio, yeah, which is, yeah, maybe I just need to go back. And it, I uh, get no uh, benefit from being on Wayland. No, and I think in some ways, I think the thing is with GNOME, it, 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 I do feel like I'm fighting against it a lot. I don't like how in, in GNOME files, they mix the folders with the files. I like my oh, folders God, at I the top. That. Oh, fuck me. And when it infects, like, your browser, you know when you're uh, uploading or downloading a file to your browser and you get the little, the little, it's in there as well. I don't want favorites. Yeah. I don't want recently used. I want my home directory, and I want it ordered by fucking alphabetical, not this is the most recently fucking, it's so confusing to me when I'm trying to find the file that I want. Yeah. I yeah. Oh, God. I, I, so I do make use of the recently used a fair bit, but, like, you know. No, I, hate time, but... I hate that. I hate that. Um, it's like, good. I, I find hierarchical fuck I'm not on a fucking phone. You know, I have a hierarchical file system that I make use of. I organize my file. I'm not quite organized on my computer, and I know where things are. If you mix it up, you're making it worse for me. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean, I know you're right. That. 90 times, 99 times out of 100, I'm on the same page. But if I'm screenshotting, I it's nice to have screenshot out the door. And the yeah, you know, I get you. Yeah, no, there's, there's certainly just context wherein it's mm. useful, but not. But most of the time. Mm. Give me the standard, because yeah, because I was thinking about this a while ago. Like, uh, it was actually talk, you know, Danny, whom you know, like mm -hmm. she, she's, you know, she's had a laptop since she was a kid. She uses the shit out of a phone. You know, she's Gen Z, so she, you know, she's she's on a laptop and a phone all the time. She's got no concept of file systems. Mm. She's got no concept of folders being hierarchical and files being inside folders because because she uses a Mac. Um, and it's all presented in that kind of like in that databasey kind of way, rather than and, and if file systems have become databases, fair enough. But they're not the they're fucking hierarchical. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what point is it, but yeah, people who use phones, they've got no sense of it being a hierarchical file system whatsoever. So it's it's just a concept that's kind of gone out of the window. So even on desktop PCs, we're presented with this kind of non-hierarchical flat way of presenting files, and I I am not used to it. I uh, well, I installed uh, from F Droid a file manager that keeps things in line for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I love F Droid. It's great. Um, it's it saved it saved phones for me in a, in a, in, a, in a lot of ways. I um, yeah. I t basically on, on my phone, I stripped everything out of it and replaced <laughs> it with stuff from F, F Droid. All of the files, all of the galleries, yeah. stuff, all of that. I think if, if I use the phone a lot, I would, I, so I've got this Samsung, I was going to mention earlier, I've got this Samsung phone that used to be my mum's, um, and it's got it's still got Samsung Android on it, and every now and then, 
I do something. I do. I don't know what I do, but I, I touch something in the wrong way, and it's and it's like, do you want to set up Amazon? Not Amazon. Do you want to set up uh, Samsung Bixby? I think it's called. And I'm like, no. Uh, no. <laughs> what is, fuck off. No. What is that? Close. It. Oh yeah. Mm. I the one thing I can't dis- I can't disable the voice assistant. Um, that's it. But that's what Bixby is. Bixby's a voice assistant thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because that was like the AI of of its of of um, a couple of years ago, and it's like I, I I wish right, and and if I was a dictator or something, I would make this a rule right. With any voice assistant software, you should be able to say, "Please uninstall yourself and never bother me again," and it should do that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That that should yeah. be. I, I would I would I would code that into law, and I think it'd be a very popular <laughs> law. I'd have a lot of laws I like mean, that to be honest. Like- I mean, people will like speak their text messages and stuff, right? And I get, I get that. That makes sense to me because you know, phone keyboard is fucking awful. But yeah, I, I mean, I don't use a phone enough to care about these things. But yeah, it, it, they're horrible. They're ho- phones are horrible. They, I swear. Maybe it's because I don't use it that much. But like, I swear, like about a fifth of my inputs are like incorrect. Like I did. I mean, first of all, on this fucking phone, you know the the sort of slide you do to just wake it up and get into the phone. Mm-hmm. Like my natural default, the way I hold it, my natural slide isn't far enough. Yeah, like just my natural, and I just I do it three or four times. I'm like for fuck's sake, and I have to do this, and it, and and like yeah, and I'll just press the wrong thing. It's just a, such a vague, horrible fucking touch interfaces. I would I would ban those as dictator. I think. I I I I'm I'm kind of okay with it because I I'm actually quite a, a good keyboarder. Uh, I use the swish and I just go. Yeah. Oh, you do that, yeah, yeah. And um, no, I can't. Yeah, no typing messages on the phone is a fucking nightmare. It's fine. I want this fundamentally. Want... You are you are you're obscuring the thing you're interacting with. Like when I try and um, edit a URL in a browser in a phone, mm-hmm. when I select the bit you want to edit with my fucking finger covering like five letters either way and trying to. Oh, okay, uh, here's a life changing tip for that. Okay, uh, slide your finger along the space bar. <laughs> That'll move the What's cursor. That? Oh, does that? Okay, okay. But how would I know? This is what I mean about vague. How, how oh, yeah. How would I know that? Yeah, if you know, like, that, it's worth, like, basic So Yeah, it's just, I don't know. Like, I. Do you know who I think I learned that from? Hmm. I think it might have been, like, Richard Madley on. <laughs> who, uh, for those of you that don't know, is a morning TV presenter who's, like, very bland and not, you know, very. <laughs> yeah like alan partridge but like the real version of alan partridge real, yeah he's, no, he's the guy that alan partridge, partridge is basically based off of him and like piers morgan and stuff it's yeah it's um, oh it's also it's all another thing that irritates the shit out of me it's got this accidental touch protection so half the okay. time i'll go to I'll, I'll go to use it and this thing will pop mm. up saying like well you know we think you've accidentally touched your phone slide all the way across here to prove that you're really actually touching it and this slide thing doesn't fucking work i do i have to wait for it to switch itself back off again before i can mm. use my fucking phone yeah i well um i th- here's an interesting thing. i had a samsung a while back and i ended up ditching it because it was kind of rubbish um, it was like the hardware was good, but then the operating system was the stuff that Samsung put into their operating system was just yeah. it just ruined the phone. It just absolutely ruined the phone. Um, and I, but I, the the woman I was dating at the time had a, a Huawei phone, the Chinese brand, mm. and it was great. The camera was amazing, yeah. and it was yeah. like a fraction of the price, and it was really really good. And then, and then I found out that Huawei actually a uh, worker-owned cooperative i believe right that made uh, billions in profit which then went in dividends to their workers which might that part. might possibly allude to the fact why the americans like tried to ban it yeah yeah, kind yeah, of, yeah. Kind of, you know it's, yeah. it's so so one of the best phones on the market worker co-op um you know probably one of the most ethically produced phones on the market like you know, it, I would if I were again if I were dictator though I would I would ban Android and iOS they're illegal now and all phones run Palm OS with a stylus. <laughs> Go back. Palm OS is great. You want a mobile operating system? Fucking Palm. I hated the stylus operating systems. They would no. Did you really? No, I think yeah. sty- I think early. I think styluses on anything but Palm OS were terrible, but a stylus Palm OS with a stylus was was wonderful. Uh, okay, I think I had I got like a hand me down of a, a a a PDA, which in hindsight now is like basically there are watches that can do more, 
and um but i thought it was so cool because it had a stylus and a screen and all that kind of stuff and i think i managed to get it to because the other one was good it was the um the scions it wasn't that it was it was it was, it was a it was a hewlett packard but it ran windows but like right, right oh, God, yeah that no, awful awful yeah yeah because I, I remember windows do you remember CE. yeah yeah windows ce windows rubbish edition um do you know what a lot of a lot of bank machines still use Windows CE. Uh, that doesn't surprise me. Is it, yeah. is it still a thing? Do they still make... Oh, it's all bank machines, yeah. <laughs> I think it's one of the most widely installed operating systems in history because of, like, point, the point of sale things, bank machines, you know, that, those kind of things. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it's... Is it, is it, is, is it Linux now that uses uh, point of sale stuff? Well, it's always disappointingly few. Like when you, I mean, I, I don't go out in the world, but you, you know, you see pictures of like billboards and stuff that have crashed, and it's it's so often Windows, and it's so weird, and it's so often. I was talking about this to Andrew the other day. I remember seeing one that was like um, on, you know, the escalators when you go into the, the London Tube. Yeah. Um, and there's those, you know, what are now animated billboards. Like every every meter, there's a different billboard, and and one of them had crashed. Hmm. So they're each running off an individual computer. Like, I think it was Linux in this case, but why aren't they all, like, just running, like, 15 screens? Like, any fucking Raspberry Pi can handle that. Why is each one its own computer? I uh, My guess would have, I don't know, like, if I was just to pull a guess out of my ass, it would be that if one gets vandalized, then the others still work. That's fair, yeah. You could yeah. probably, I mean, you could probably... That would still be the case, but yeah, yeah. Or it might be it. I don't. I don't know if this case, but if they mass produce like little boards, they might be cheaper than linking up with HDMI because HDMI yeah, cables that, ain't that cheap, probably, really. Yeah, you probably buy this thing on its own. Yeah, has its own unit, but it's odd. Mm. It's odd. Yeah, well, it's odd because we think of computers as desktop computers now, but like with all the ARM stuff that's going around, a computer can be fucking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. I mean, first of all, it's absurd that we have those, and you know, those billboards should just be gone. But yeah, know. no, yeah, well, like, you're right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if the taxpayer is going to fund fifty percent of the London Underground, I think we can do away with the adverts. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we should. Uh, uh, do you know, like, what we should? Do? <laughs> so, okay, this is a terrible idea, but I think it's Sweden uh, that has a, uh, a a national Twitter account and. A random person gets selected every, every day to be in charge of the Swedish <laughs> official Twitter account, and it's like, could we do that for some like London London advertising billboards? Like every, you know, there's a lottery, oh, someone gets selected. Oh. That's kind of um, like what we, when we were talking about like rejuvenating the high street and what we would mm. do with it. I mean, this, we were talking about like uh, off air, um, but yeah, just like sort of screens that were just mm. like. Just for people to use for that, like I've made an animation yeah. project, or here's my artwork, or you know, just like yeah. here's pictures of my dog. <laughs> just, yeah. yeah, just, just send it that rather than, fucking, rather yeah. than ads. That'd be beautiful. Yeah, like memes. You know, like yeah. oh my god, yeah. Because the thing is, right, I I love I do like memes as an art form because they are like they're kind of like the art of the proletariat, aren't they? They're the they're the art of the people. You know, they got the they got the commentary, they say things. You know, some mm. of it's quite insightful. And it's you oh, know yeah. and, it's some I, real my, fucking wit sometimes, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean I, I some I, I can get lost on Reddit just looking at the memes to be honest. <laughs> oh my God. Right. So uh have you have you caught up with the debate with the vice no, presidential I've debate? Watched, I've not watched it yet. Did he literally say that during the debate? Yes. Did he literally say the agreement was you weren't going to fact check me? Yes. That's insane. Yeah. That's yeah. absolutely fucking insane. So, yeah, he was talking about the Haitian immigrants and stuff. And for some reason, <laughs> that meme, like, just super tickled my funny bone, right? Like, it, it just I mean, I hits tell, me right there. I could tell you were posting that fucking everywhere, yeah. I was, I was on Reddit looking for those <laughs> memes. Like, it was just like, I literally, I think I must have spent an evening just on Reddit looking for JD Vance memes. <laughs> You know, I'm a patron of the arts. You you know it. It's like, uh, oh my god! Like because it's not just it's the picture, it's the hand up going. Eh, eh, you guys weren't going to fact check. <laughs> like, it's, it's, I can't get my head around that being real. I need to watch the debate and see it in context because that is fully insane. That's yeah. that's something like out of a out of a you know an Ian, 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 Ian kind of parody thing. Not yeah. it's it's. it's oh. 
it, the debate itself actually was was surprisingly normal for the most part. There were a few bits. Um, the VP debates were often boring, which I think is why I haven't got around to it yet. But. It's not. It's not the most exciting debate. Like the the they're really the dogs. That one's much better. <laughs> <laughs> I saw her on the telly. They're eating the dogs. It's, oh my god. I mean, part yeah. of it, part of my reaction to that is like, I if the if the what if. If they are eating the dog, of course they're not. I know they're not. Mm. But if they were eating the dogs, I, I, don't, I don't care. I don't like dogs. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love dogs. You know, the occasional cat gets caught, you know, caught in the. I don't. You know, they're going to eat some animal. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I don't eat animals, so they're like I. It's it's yeah, like I see, like it's a, it's a relatively level playing field. If you're going to eat. If some Haytons move into my, you know, across the street and I, you know, I smell a barbecue and I go around and they're barbecuing a dog, I'll have some. <laughs> well, okay, that's that's Pre the last episode of Freebooters then, I guess. <laughs> nice knowing you guys. I eat a dog. Uh, no, I mean, like, yeah, like a dog or a pig is, you know, the same. It reminded me, that I, I, I walked into my parents having a conversation once while mm. watching, I think, like a Richard At Attenborough documentary. About you where mean David they Attenborough. Draw... What did I say? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah not Jurassic Park. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, and and they were talking like, what what's the cutoff point of animals you would eat? Um, and they both agreed, like very like like firmly agreed that they would, would draw the line at monkeys because they have hands. Oh my god! I never even thought about how creepy it is to eat an animal with hands. <laughs> That was, that was where they drew the line, and they're both. Oh my they're God. Both like, Imagine yeah, getting because yeah, oh. it's got hands. Obviously, you're not going to eat something with hands. Obviously not. No. I, mean, well, like, I don't. I, I didn't get you. You're on board with them. I didn't. I was like, "What are you fucking talking about? They haven't got hands." Like, so if it's intelligence, then you know, pigs are very, very intelligent. You know, most birds are very intelligent. We shouldn't really be. If it's based on that, we shouldn't be eating pigs. I gotta be honest, right? When I when I do think of people eating pigs, I do think of like like a pig's like as smart as like at least a four year old child. <laughs> Like, yeah, so you yeah. kind of eat, smart, like, would you... a, a, the dumbest pig is a hundred times smarter than the smartest dog that's ever. Like, people when people talk about dogs, and dogs are the stupidest, no, fuck. they're so stupid. Okay, it depends on the dog and it depends on the breed. Like, no, collies no, are, are dogs, super smart. Any, any, any given rock is more intelligent than any dog. Oh, god, what is it? What did you get attacked by a dog when you were young or something? Dogs do, dogs do all hate me. Dogs do all like oh. every every. The, my my sister brought the neighbor's dog around the other day, and it was a boxer, quite a big boxer. Mm. Uh, and I, I, you know, I don't, I kind of dislike, but I don't really dislike dogs. I got, I, I stroked it, I let it sniff my hand, to, you know, to like, mm. I'm a, this is my smell. Um, then I stroked its head, and it was quite happy with that. And then I think I said to my sister, maybe this is the one dog that doesn't hate me. And then it just went <laughs> and started snapping at me. Uh, yeah, every dog hates me. I'm a Terminator or something. Oh, wow. Do you think it's like the the anxiety or something that triggers? No, no, I, I, I'm not afraid. I could take a fucking dog. I'm not afraid. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this conversation is going to upset so many people. Oh dear. Five, five cats, I'd be afraid, but one dog, I don't care how big. I'll take a fucking dog. Oh, Hamish is not going to like this shit. I'm just Hamish watches. And he's not... <laughs> no, yeah, Hamish oh, just joking. like yeah, lambast him. <laughs> oh. Oh, I love Peanut too. Peanut's lovely. Um, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, adorable. Yeah, no, he's, dog, he's, yeah. Uh, he does a little bit of trolling. I, kind of I, a bit of trolling. I hate dogs in principle more than I hate them in in in, in practice. Like mm. any individual dog, I tend to I tend to like. They don't never like me, but dog dogs is an idea. I think mm. you know we better. Yeah. <laughs> sort sort of like the French. <laughs> no, there I'd we like, go. No, I'd, like I'd rather have the, if we kept French people as pets. Rather than dogs, I'd, the world would be a much better place. I wonder what what King Henry the Eighth's stance on that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> well, he kind of he kind of probably thought of himself as much as French as England. I mean, he spoke French. He owned half of France. Yeah, yeah. Did I don't know. We've I can't, remember, I can't remember where the cutoff point where the who was the first English king who actually spoke English because it was really late, wasn't it? I think it was after Henry, right? That oh, was it. After no, Henry, no, Henry, Henry must have spoken English. Yeah, because no, Greensleeves. Sleeves. English, yeah. Greece yeah, and English. Shakespeare and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, but then again, what was English like in the 1400s? I mean Shakespeare. Oh, Shakespeare. <laughs> well, I mean, okay. So, yeah. um, when was Chaucer? 
God, I should I mean, know that, this. Yeah, that's, that was old English, wasn't it? Middle English. Chaucer. Middle English, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't even, like, I don't know. What do they speak in Norfolk? Um, so, oh, my God, sorry. Why are we being so racist today? <laughs> Again. <laughs> my, my dad had a thing about Norfolk as well. It was just every now and then, if Norfolk was on TV, it'd be Nor Norfolk. It's so depressing. Norfolk's lovely. I love Norfolk. No, his thing was like, he was like the big open spot. He, he, he would always say, oh, it's the big open spy, uh, open sky. Like, it just drives people mad. That's why, that's why, <laughs> that's why there's so much suicide in Norfolk. It was like, I don't know if that's even true. It just had these ideas about Norfolk. I, 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 I... I didn't observe an unusual amount of suicide when I lived in Norwich. Uh, it's nice. <laughs> Just a very nice place. I'm trying to get with the big sky, with that like perfectly flat horizon yeah. of just a, that sunset link. Well, it's when you play... Do you ever play GeoGuessr? Yeah, well, well, you don't like GeoGuessr, but like <laughs> when I play GeoGuessr and I'm in America, that's not like... That, that's in one of the yeah, flat bits yeah, of America. The Midwest, where it's yeah. very flat. Like that's that's that is a bit unnerving to me because that's even flatter than Norfolk. Like Norfolk, yeah. there is there is some yeah, 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 some yeah. like texture. But I feel the same way about like for me, it's got to be in the middle. I want rolling hills, like mountains, like terrifying to me. Can't imagine living near something that big. It's like it's a god. It's going to come <laughs> and attack me. Yeah, I mean, I, I like where I live. It's got texture. Like, you can go, yeah. like, five miles in that direction and it feels like a whole different place. That's oh, yeah, no, Wales is... I love Wales. Wales is beautiful. Wales is, 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 is yeah, absolutely I mean, gorgeous. We, we have very I'm manageable mountains. It. Like, even, yeah, even our mountains yeah. are quite, you know... Very tame mountains. I'm okay with those. <laughs> I think you'd love like the valleys. Wales. Like, you've kind of got... Oh, no, like I, a... no, I've spent a lot of time in Wales. I love Wales. All, all of yeah. Wales. Every bit of Wales. A bit, and the people. I love the people in Wales. yeah. I lo I love I I don't know I've got I've definitely got a soft spot for for valleys folks because they just got a yeah. realness to them like there's yeah 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 you know and yeah. and and, 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 and to be honest there's a weird kind of like living in a valley is just a kind of isolate even in this modern connected it's a kind of mm -hmm. isolation yeah yeah it's it's it, it's a preserved culture as well and I think like yeah. with a lot of valleys towns they still have kept a lot of that community spirit that that I wish we had think, here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, your, your problem with your town is it's yeah, it's become a commuter town for a bigger. So it's yeah. rich people treating it as a suburb, yeah, as opposed to yeah. those communities which it's because they're poor. You know, you don't get people coming and wanting to move there. Yeah, so yeah, like it, yeah, and and I, I guess having the the good schools in the area is a curse as much as a blessing, right? Because uh, it drives the house prices up. Nothing drives house mm. prices up like a good school. Like seriously, I've I've more oh, than yeah, once no. contemplated putting lead in the drinking water just to just to get somewhere to live. You know, like <laughs> <laughs> that's going to get us cancelled. <laughs> um... right. oh, speaking of valleys and all that, it's like again, our friend Danny. She was caught in the uh, hurricane. The, like, oh yeah, the, the, the worst hit part of uh, North Carolina. So her, her town's been. She's had no power. Her town's been cut. No internet. Obviously, no water. Um, and she like she 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 got her data back recently, and she was telling me like she's because like she didn't have a phone, she didn't have a computer. She started wearing a wristwatch, which I thought was interesting. Um, hmm. She needed to know the time. I mean, you got no phone, you got like, you got no phone. You need to know the time. You got to go back to wearing a wristwatch. And I thought that was yeah. I thought it was, and I said hey, you think you're going to carry on wearing it, you know, even when. And she was like, yeah, I think I'll I think I'll carry on wearing it. Oh. So that's interesting. I was I was given a wrist a really nice wristwatch for Christmas last year or the year before the year before I think, and I and it's lovely, but the weight on my wrist is difficult to get used I to. I think I think if I if I wore a wristwatch now it would be one of those. I think they're quite fashionable now, but you know the, the old eighties Casio, mm, not, yeah. even, not even the not even the bigger one like the little the little Casio ones that literally just digital time. That's all. Maybe a little light or something. That's what and they're very light. I think that's mm. what I think I'd be very utilitarian about it. Yeah, yeah, it's. Uh... But yeah, you're. I don't, like, want, a, I don't want an analog watch because I literally can't tell the analog time. I cannot read a fucking analog clock. That uh, that's that's the case with a surprisingly large number of people, and I I never like. I mean, when I say I can't, you give me you give me. I mean, like genuinely, what would like probably thirty seconds to tell what time? Maybe not thirty, like twenty thirty no, seconds yeah. to work out like what? Yeah, no, awful. Yeah, I, I you know I'm a bit like that with numerical dates, um, whereas like. <laughs> 
I have to count. I still have to count. Oh, uh, like there are some. Like I know that September's nine and May is five. Oh no! I'm the, yeah, 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 yeah. And November's yeah, nine, eleven and twelve. Yeah, September sticks to nine. It, there's a sing, not a. What's the word for when like sounds? There's a synesthetic thing with September and nine fitting together. Even though it's absurd because sept means seven. The fucking Roman emperors fucked that up. Yeah. To be honest, I to me it's the opposite. The unsynth thingy. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, it's like I know it's I know it's nine because it's not seven because it should be seven. <laughs> Blooming Julius we Caesar. Should, that, that is one of the stupidest things. Who mm. was it? The Romans that did that? Did they fuck up their own months? They named them yeah. or some. They named some of the months after numbers. Yeah, the number of the month, and then they commemorated two emperors and shoved them in. Mm. Oh, who who thought that was a good idea? Can we undo that? I see. The thing is right depending on how you want to like lay out the calendar because you could do a, a, a base 10 sort of system however it what i i reckon would be the the most ideal system would literally to be having the the orbital calendars right the, the lunar calendar because having a year of 13 months exactly works so much better than it sounds right i know 13 prime number but actually if you divide the year down into weeks as a result of that because if you have 13 months 13 lunar months each month is exactly four weeks long so you yeah. can easily break the year down into halves thirds quarters i don't know about thirds but quarters um and the, the, do, yeah uh and 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 then yeah like the year is the year because i don't uh because that that fits with the seasons um and a day is a day. Like, you can't really have, like, you can maybe have, like, base 10 hours, minutes, and seconds, because we kind of do that below a second, right? Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm on board, yeah. Yeah, you've mentioned yeah. this before. I'm, I'm on board, yeah, with going to anything that just, anything that makes more sense than our current. Yeah. So also, yeah. get rid of time zones. We just have the same time yeah. everywhere. UTC everywhere. UTC everywhere. Yep. I, I <laughs> yeah. cannot believe, I cannot believe we've got daylight savings time still, because that's oh, that some well. an, yeah, ancient farmer stuff. Um, the just you know, it's like a, tr a sleep trial twice a year, right? You got to get used to slightly, slightly different sleep pattern twice a year. And but it and, does and... If, if the things are red or accurate, I don't, like it does lead to like more people die, mm. of just like heart attacks and stuff during the, yeah. the switch over. So, and then you get um, yeah, so like get yeah, UTC everywhere. Like we just wake up at different times. Because the thing is I mean, there, might be, there might be some argument against UTC with it being very Eurocentric. I'm I'm okay with basing it somewhere. I mean, China would make sense as the most populous country, stick it in China or if India wants you know, I'm I'm okay with it being based somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't have a problem where it where it's based. I yeah, like it's 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 relatively arbitrary. Maybe we can have a drawing competition. Uh <laughs> To I'm determine where it gets paced. <laughs> you know. Or or ah, here's an idea, right? Because it's a longitudinal line, right? How about the most amount of land along a longitudinal axis? Yeah, I was thinking I was my brain was going down the same path, but I was thinking most sea. Oh, okay. Because most most land you're kind of favoring those people. Most sea, you're favoring nobody. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah. Because isn't isn't zero zero the coordinate zero zero just a random place in the ocean? Well, it, well, it's it's because we, the British, invented mm. the measure we use for for longitude. So we put the 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 prime meridian in Greenwich, right? Yeah, yeah, Where the Royal yeah, Observatory but, was. yeah. But like, yeah, locational Rich. coordinates. I th I think it's like or like, yeah, because it's like it's the busiest, like it's the theoretical busiest part of the ocean. But it's not actually the busiest part of the ocean because it's a random place in the middle of off the coast, like off the west coast of Africa, I think. Yeah, well, it goes it goes through Greenwich and then down through. Is it? Libya? No, no, no. I'm talking about down. I'm talking about the other one. Oh, what are you talking about? Uh, the, the, the 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 sea place in the zero zero coordinate sea place. <laughs> what? I didn't know we had such a thing. I think there was. That, I think I saw it like the equator where the equator crosses the prime meridian. Uh, Null Island. Null Island. Null Island. Null Island. It's the location of zero degrees latitude and zero degrees longitude where the prime meridian and the equator intersect. There is no landmass located at these coordinates and is not actually an island. The name is often used in mapping software as a placeholder to find the correct database entries oh, that have erroneously so been assigned to So they can attach. So that's why it's Null Island. That's interesting. 
it's it's in like i want to say the crook of africa you know like the yeah, yeah. The, you know the the yeah. embrace of africa so is it but so there you must, know there, so, must be, there must be a point longitudinally on the globe that's all sea all the way down right i mean ignoring the, the antarctica yeah obviously. being the pacific or something right yeah there must there must be somewhere yeah let's pick yeah. the do you ever do you ever see like those like little pacific islands and it's like it's tiny islands surrounded by thousands of miles of just sea Terr- that's think, terrifying to me yeah it's like it just almost looks like on a map that like one wave would just like well, it's not no it's not it's not that it's it's for me it's and it's not not really isolation like okay so in the uk we've got like europe as like a blanket for security and it does feel mm. like it feels like sleeping without your duvet like yeah whereas like even australia or something there's nothing around i mean there's little like you know but you look at australia it's, there's nothing there's just sea all around it and that's terrifying being that exposed it's terrifying i know that's not how it feels standing about australia is quite big but you know what i mean like yeah although how many how many wars has australia been in that it didn't get like roped into I mean, it's been in all the wars. You know about the Emu War, I assume? No. So Australia literally fought a military war against the Emus and and lost. What did the you Emus need, do? You need, you, need look at, you need to look it up for the details because I've, I've got them all and B, they're great. But yeah, no, they literally had a military campaign, a war against the Emus. Wow. And they lost. <laughs> so that one... Mm. But yeah, all all the others. Yeah, I mean, there was that there was that meme somebody posted on uh, fairly recently that was um, I think it was going back to the eighties and it was American presidents and all the wars they've you know been involved in and it was you know three or four wars at least for each president and then Chinese presidents at the same times and how many mm. wars it was like no wars no wars no, like China's not been at fucking war. Mm. Yeah, and I quite like the um... oh hang on no, no, we're drifting into Dargoth hour. Um... I was going. Gonna though do you think we could get because i know there's definitely things on the internet that are mm. funded by the ccp right mm. and we're willing to be quite positive about china do you think we could get mm. some ccc if, if if you're a ccp member um i think we want to do an upfront like sponsorship thing like this this episode <laughs> is brought to you by the communist party of china. <laughs> well i don't know i mean who isn't a shell on the internet exactly. these days, yeah, right? Gonna, like, a shell. Why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, I can, <laughs> why not? I can... You know, who's clearly winning? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Like, could we, there, there, I mean, we could we could get sponsorships from other governments as well, like more 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 politically neutral ones. Okay. What about government. what about Saint Vincent and the Grenadines? Why do we get sponsorship from them? <laughs> I no, no one. I, don't know. I mean, given recent uh, events, how about Mauritius? Oh yeah, of course. Yeah, I've heard. yeah we, I, I, I was watching a thing because I was like, I need to know about Mauritius since this is happening. Mm. Um, they've got uh, the highest, uh, uh, like whoever, whatever organization goes in and checks people's democracies. They've got the highest mm. like democracy score in Africa. They've got a very high uh, human development index. Like it, it's, it seems to be a nice mm. country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've I've met there's quite there's a few uh, Mauritian folks in you know like in in South Wales like like yeah, and and every, every single one of them is lovely and nice and cool and okay. You know. So if either the CCP or Mauritius would like to sponsor us, mm-hmm. who else? What other countries? Are we <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. How about how about how about Cyprus? You know, given that they're gonna they're gonna put Phidias in in the par- European Parliament, they're, okay, they're gonna I'm okay with Cyprus. Yeah, so, they've got a complicated yeah. and interesting history. And so, how about how about the UN? Would we yes. accept UN sponsorship? Uh, yeah, I'll be, yeah, you know. I'll, I'll be okay. And I think we're in a given given the success of this podcast. Mm-hmm. I think we're in a powerful enough position now to make demands of the UN. Yeah. Um, so my demands would be that they get rid of the permanent members of the Security Council. Yeah, definitely. Uh, in fact, get rid of the Security Council. Just have it a one, one country, one vote thing. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's our conditions. United. Hang on, Nations. one country, one vote. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. That doesn't seem fair. Why? Because uh, well, populations? It's not, or? Yeah, popular is, is, you know. Well, they're all acting as nations, right? They, they're in the... This is like this is like when they did the US Constitution. This okay, is why all, right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. <laughs> all right. and I, I get that these things have to be simple, right? Like because otherwise, like China, China's going to go. China's going to have enough votes to almost carry anything on its own if we do it. And by then population. India, China, yeah. 
Try to an India together. I could literally. I don't like Modi. I don't like Modi. Oh no, there, there. Yeah. If there is a, uh, Dagotha, so very brief. But if there's mm. if there is anything that is an actual fascism right now, it's probably that. Mm. I mean, you know, there are other ones, but you know, in a big country. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if fascism would be the descript. Like, do you know what I mean? Because it's because of the nature of the country and the decentralized. It's a lot of the. It does in, fit in, a lot of the ultra traditionalist. It's got the it's got mm. the street level element. It's yeah. Mm. Well, maybe yeah. yeah in well. India, get rid of Modi. Yeah, and I, 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 I'm hoping that the young, the the young vote is going to come through eventually because well, you know, all, in all of these, all of these places, this this is true. You know, it's true. It's true to an extent in France, but it, was it Austria that just recently elected fascists? Um, oh God, like yeah. Bulgaria. I don't know. All the countries that tend, you know, to have like something close to fascism as the main party. Always the second place, second place party is a socialist party, like every fucking mm. time. So, you know, mm -hmm. just need a little bit of a bump. Yep. Anyway, this is too politics. Yeah. Think about Linux. Okay, Linux. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Uh, well, well, Debian XFCE. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. I've got notes. I've got notes. Okay. Who, there who, are a few who, who would we accept sponsorship in the uh, in the Linux world? Uh. Well, I mean, the Linux Foundation would be fine. I would, I would take them. Oh my God! What if Mozilla sponsored us and we just spent every every week trashing them? I'd love that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Give us half of that Google money. Yeah. Okay. So, um, right. Should we talk a little bit about Valve and Arch? Because this is kind of interesting. Oh, what? Sorry, you can't very Valve funny. and Arch. Uh, yes, and, I, yeah. can I just I've got another whinge before we get onto that. Is when we were oh, talking yeah, about advertising away. things. I think mm -hmm. when we were talking about LinkedIn sending us emails and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know you, uh, so Steam a while ago added that thing that's at the top of your when you're looking at the default home screen of your games, uh, mm -hmm. that place at the top that's for like notifications about game stuff, like so you know, such and such a game has been in, you know updated or whatever. Mm -hmm. So so First of all, I don't care about that anyway. I just I, I want to be able to switch that off, which you can't do. You have to go every time there's a news thing. You have to go. Don't show me this again. Don't show me this again. Right, whatever. Mm -hmm. But games developers now are using it to uh, announce another game that they're making, which is not news about that game. Fuck off. Stop. Mm -hmm. Like that, that. Then it becomes an advertise, like a very distinctly advertising place, or like. We're making plushies of characters in this fucking game. Fuck off with that shit as well. Stop advertising at me. I hate that Steam did that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, but <laughs> they are giving money to Arch, and yeah. it seems that I mean, it seems like part of it is just they want to keep Arch healthy. But there are there's also a goal I think that they've got in mind that they want to help Arch get to, and I think this is a mutual goal of both Arch and Valve to support ARM sixty four architecture, mm. which I like because. I can imagine in the future ARM sixty four being a bit a, a much bigger, uh, <laughs> archi you know, much more common architecture even on the desktop. I can imagine ARM sixty four desktops at some point. Um, yeah, and Wine is starting to work on ARM because I I'd always ooh. thought that if you wanted to get x eight six games running on Wine on ARM, you would need mm. like. Uh, an emulation layer, right? Because because you emulate, but I guess you I guess you don't. You just need to you just need still that translation layer, so that can be done. So mm. presumably, at some point, we're going to see ARM based um, theme decks. I, I would I think that. so because x six x eighty six, and I've never held a Steam Deck in my life, but I'm imagining there's cooling issues with um, yeah. x eighty six that would be mitigated with with an ARM uh, processor. And that would be obviously very good, but also I would like to have a, a computer, a desktop computer, without fans to have to cool it down. Yeah, like no, I'd love, I'd love. Yeah, if you could play, if you could play the games I play and Proton worked on an ARM basis, I would love that. Yeah, yeah, lower power great. draw, yeah. no noise, beautiful. Because yeah. fans, 
like, they're a little bit of the bane of my existence because with with you know I, I have custom desktop builds a lot of the time and over time the bearings wear out on the fans and then you've got to replace mm -hmm. them and then but the trouble is it's like the case you've got to get the right size for the case and you're going to measure it da, 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 da. and then i think that should have been yeah whoever was dictator of the world at the time should have made the rule like computers can't have fans in them you've got to do it like yeah. design for passively cooled and that's the that's the most powerful computer we get at any time like because like, yeah. fans in computers are silly yeah like it's it's uh it, it, you know they're loud um I, I don't even know what their efficacy is to be honest i'm pretty sure that a lot of people when they build their gaming pcs over fan them oh yeah yeah no they were concerned far too. i remember years and years and years ago i was like all this stuff because there was a lot of uh you see articles and videos and stuff about like how to perfectly arrange a case for like perfect airflow and like yeah. saw a video where somebody they basically did it like following you know the perfect guidelines of how to do it perfectly and then doing it as badly as possible and then measuring the temperature difference and the temperature difference was like literally undetectable because basically oh. if you're pumping air in and out <laughs> you're pumping air in and out yeah like... <laughs> yeah it, it it's going to go somewhere so yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah now when you yeah. say as bad as possible yeah. i assume yeah. thermal uh, when you say... can fuck off fans can fuck off uh, when when you say um as bad as possible right like i i assume you don't mean that they just turn the fans inward or like oh no you know... no it was, yeah, no. So it was just like put put all the cables right in front of the fan, as obstructing mm. it as possible. Everything all in the top of the case where it was all yeah, creating mm. you know pockets and corners and stuff. Yeah, but it was yeah, not 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 like wiring up backwards or anything like that. Yeah. So um. So yeah. So I don't. I guess we don't really have that much to say about Valve. Well, I, do, oh, also... I, I do like not to overpraise you know a corporation, but when Valve. Mm. Uh, do do things like this. They do seem to do it in the right way. They don't try and take the project over. They don't try and you know like mm. bring it in house or anything like. That. They just they just like what do you, what do you need? This is going to be mutually beneficial. Like they're not doing it out of the kindness of their own hearts. They're doing it because they need it. But they're doing it in the right much as you know the uh, the the CCP would because they are pure and good <laughs> and, and only do good things. Um, the I mean, have have Valve considered uh, starting a browser? <laughs> that'd be uh, crazy that, yeah. well i mean they've got the there's that one built into steam right that is literally chromium based blink. yeah horrible yeah. oh but um yeah so um and also i think they might be looking at use like for vr headsets um then the mm. the arm 64 stuff is probably going to be quite oh, i wish, I wish they give up on vr really I, it's not going anywhere it didn't go anywhere in the 90s it's not going anywhere now like it's got niche use yeah. but it's not it, it's never going to be the mainstream way of people game i don't think i i think i think they might have conceded that and i think they might just be circling in on the five percent market of is it even a five percent market one I, I, I think i think yeah, I think it's, it's it's comparable to the Linux because you see a lot of mm. posts going, why, "Why is so much attention paid to VR and so little to Linux when they've got the same market share?" Yeah. Well, it's I mean board meetings, I'm guessing, right? That's the yeah, it's the yeah. it's the thing. Um, yeah, and um, but yeah, I and and also they they are putting money towards a more automated uh, package maintenance setup. Yeah, it's build, um, build, build stuff and certification stuff. Not certification. No, um, what's the word? Signature stuff. Yeah, right? that's it. Yeah. So, Which arch? Yeah, arch needed for a while. Yeah. So good, uh, good, good, good news. It's nice yeah. to have good news. It's good, it's good for arch, and it's good for it's good for Valve. I, I think mm. they I think they did the right, the right thing settling on arch. I think if you're going to build something like that, and it was the same with the Chrome OS, they settled on um, uh, Gen two, right? They take Gen mm. two and patch it, and yeah. I think yeah. it's got to be Arch or Gentle. You can't, you can't do it. I think Debian and it was Ubuntu, wasn't it? And then was it Debian for a while? And that yeah. never quite worked because of, they do, fit, you know, they do kind of fiddle with stuff. It's not as whatever. And 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 Debian is like I think they found Debian to be a bit of a tricky biscuit in that, like, yeah, Debian fiddled with stuff, but also, um, I mean, Debian is is kind of in spirit an anti corporate distribution yeah yeah, um, yeah. And, and and i think also if you've got stable stable is just a little bit too old for Probably, for gaming yeah, yeah. you know like yeah. i game on, on, they, can on add, they can add their own repo mm. that updates the things that you need to update i mean you could do it on top of Debian, but then it, but it, yeah i think but then, if you can just take not, arch not, arch is very fuck aroundable mm. with I think is, yeah. is what you about well, it. You th it's not only is it very fuck aroundable with, but also like you you take Arch and you 
immutable as you immutabilize it or you, mm. you secure it shore it up and you've got a very up-to-date secure operating system in in a, yeah. few, a few short commands almost, how do you, how do you feel about like would you want immutability on your machine i i don't i don't immediately see the advantages that i would get out of it does it does it affect performance well it means you can't fuck you can't fuck it up basically you can't fuck the base system up I, I mean, I, I, can see. I don't. I'll put it this way: I don't see a reason. There's no downsides to it. I mean, mm. there are if you want to fuck with the system in that way. But you know, broadly speaking, for the average user, I don't think there's any down. I think I think we probably are going to head there, and I'm okay yeah. with that. I mean, it's it's fine. I mean, like I say, Debian stable. It's not a, it's not a problem I'm used to dealing with. So no, no. <laughs> with with a rolling yeah, distribution. Hard. With something like you have Arch, to work hard with like a Debian system. Yeah, yeah, and and all I do is just. You know, apt update from time to time. Yeah, it's just, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. See, that's the part of Debian that I'd love is just the. the I don't want stuff updating. We've talked about it before. I don't want yeah. stuff updating all the time. Yeah, the only thing that bothers me a little bit, but not enough for me to actually do anything about it, is that the Firefox ESR, uh, like when I update, is a lot of language packs in there that I could probably take out. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. other can than you not, that, can you, not, can you not actually get rid of them. Probably, but I, I, yeah. I'm. Yeah, it's not. Yeah. Yeah, I update yeah. once. I don't know once. Once when I feel like it, and it, yeah. it, it, it adds like I don't know twenty <laughs> seconds onto an update. It's quite a lot. It's quite a few packages. That is another. It's, yeah, that is another thing that has bothered me a little bit when I'm using Debian. The Arch uh, Pac-Man is so quick hmm. compared to every other. Every other like I remember the um, the Fedora one. They might it might be better now, but the Fedora no, one back in the way. Oh yeah. <laughs> It was yeah. so slow. Debian, Debian felt fast in 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 comparison mm. to Fedora, uh, but yeah, Pac Man, Pac Man is so fast. Yeah, Pac Man's good. I like. But then again, actually, to be honest, like I think I don't. But when you're updating like once every six months, yeah, <laughs> gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I suppose given the the nature of Arch, Pac Man has to be. It does, it, I yeah. mean, Pac Man is almost like the thing that makes it Arch, really, isn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. And you can. Yeah. I think that. I can't really quite wrap my head around, but the thing that people don't seem to make use of much is you can install, for example, Pac-Man on Debian if you wanted to and pull from Pac-Man from Arch. Pac I don't understand how that would work, but that is a thing that you can do. That's fascinating. I, I've i heard... Is there, a, is there like a Debian version of the AUI? I remember there being a project set up to do something like that. How or is there a way... Was it for... No, that couldn't make sense, would it? Uh, I do I'll give it a good Google. I don't hear much about it because, to be honest, like the Debian repos are pretty sizable, yeah, yeah, and yeah, and and third party, you know, like most things come with a .dot deb or uh, an app image, really. Failing that, yeah, that pack, yeah. So, um, I don't think a, a Debian AUR fills. Fills a gap there. Oh, I did a quick. Uh, uh, well, obviously, hmm. back, in, back in the day, Ubuntu did it with um, what? They, what were they called? Was it Get Deb? No, Ubuntu's where it would have. It was essentially just a third party repo, but they had some system for. What were they called? Oh, was it? It wasn't like Juliet or something like that, was it? No. Um... No, no, it had. Oh God, A A P. <laughs> Feeling old. <laughs> I think it was a three-letter acronym or something like that. You're not talking about PPAs, right? PPAs, that's what exactly what I'm talking oh. about. Yeah, which all that was really was a third-party repo. But there yeah. was a mechanism for incorporating it into into the package manager in a, in, a, in a seamless way. And that was essentially... That was the wrong way to do the AUR, essentially. Yeah, because like, because it being third-party, it would always break and... You, you want it in one place. Yeah. You don't want to have to add a PPA for every project. You just want to have a PPA that you add and then all, all of the third party stuff goes in there. Yeah. I think um, that's yeah. I see the upside the other way, but Yeah. Well it's like uh Flathub. Yeah, yeah. A default, yeah. Yeah. I'm so down on flat packs now. For a while I was I was I was okay with them, but I'm down on them again now. I I mean uh, anything that I could have used for a flat pack I can do in a web browser. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. Um, unless it's something that's just a newer version of what I've already got and I'm happy to wait. Yeah, no. Yeah. Uh, I really yeah. need a piss. Can you are you okay on your own for a moment? Uh yeah, sure, sure. I can I can talk about oh yeah, I've got something to talk about. 
Okay, so um, I don't. So Fediverse news. Fediverse news. Um, so I don't know if folks have heard, but Dan Sup, who does the uh, uh, Pixel Fed software, uh, is working with. It's working on a TikTok, Instagram Reels kind of thing uh, where, you know, like, so, yeah, TikTok, Instagram kind of thing, but for the Fediverse, right? So it's, it's like videos it's called Loops. And uh, I've signed myself up for, a, for an open beta. So uh, that's Drew's uh, kettle, by the way. Um, I don't know if it might, it, I think it might actually get muted out. Um, but yeah, so so I, I've signed myself up for a uh, for for the I think it's closed beta actually, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, to seeing how that goes. Um, I've been playing around with like shorts a little bit. I know that probably if you're watching certainly this far into the podcast, you're probably not going to be super interested in in shorts, but um, I, I I will be interested to see how it how it folds out on the Fediverse and. Um, uh, and and so on there you go i was talking about loops do you know loops drew no no it's like um tiktok for the fediverse okay it's, uh, cool. it's, it's, yeah. it's not out yet but i've signed up for the uh for the closed beta and and, and fingers crossed so that's when america uh, bans tiktok that's what we'll all be on yeah I, i'm surprised that so many americans are still using tiktok given that it seems to seems to be... i i think it'll be one of those things where because it's not when something's kind of waning, I think mm. you can, you know, you can ban it and people are go, oh, I'll just find something else. But TikTok mm. is so, so pervasive that I think people mm. will get VPNs, you know, they'll head it there. Because I assume it's just going to be a DNS block, the same way that, like, uh, Pirate Bay's blocked here. Mm. So there'll just yeah. be, there'll be proxies, or, you know. Yeah, and possibly. VP, I think, yeah, I think, I think VPN sales are going to go through the way. Yeah. <laughs> invest, in, invest in VPNs. Actually, I think, I mean... I don't like. I've got. I think when I signed up for NordVPN, it gives you like an affiliate link. So I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> if anyone's gonna, if anyone's thinking about getting NordVPN, give me a shout on on the Fediverse and and use use my link. I guess I don't know. Sponsored Recently, by I'm on, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on a VPN now. I'm on. Um, so my my friend uh, my friend signed up, so I'm on one of their slots. Um, <laughs> on uh, Proton actually was the cheapest at the time, and they went with that. Okay, what's the speeds like? It seems fine. Yeah, it's got. Um, I'm just connecting via. I'm, I like. I didn't install a client or anything. I'm just connecting via WireGuard with WG Quick and uh, just starting mm -hmm. that when I boot. And yep, not noticed any difference. Fantastic. I just use the the NordVPN app. Um, just works very good. It's command line app. Um, yeah, no complaints really. I I, I picked NordVPN because it was a cheap and b had a had an app. I don't. I, I had um, CyberGhost before then, and I was using OpenVPN, and it, I don't know. I just like the, the app just takes a whole bunch of steps out of it, and, and uh, that's yeah. I was I was on back in the day. I was on Mulvad for a while because of the WireGuard thing, really. Um, and I kind of realized like I don't really need like the only thing like I'll take a VPN if it's free because it's mm -hmm. just you know ISP fuck off. Um, and 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 uh, geo spoofing. That's all I really care. Like, it's not a security thing for me. It is. It's basically just, um, yeah, just a bit of privacy from my ISP. And yeah, geo spoofing when I want to watch, you know, American whatever. Yeah, same, same, same for me. I, it's like the um, yesterday today is not available in the UK. Um, that's the John Oliver show, which is, is quite new. Uh, okay. Um, but I. Yeah, like I, I, I use it for, for, for basically I don't want every website I know to every every website I go to to have my email address in their logs. It just mm. it's just you know, it's 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 just I don't know, hygiene I guess I think of it as, you know, mm. like Yeah. It just, yeah, now just I've got access to one, I just yeah, I just leave it on. I'm not gonna yeah, dick around with yeah. turning it off and on, but yeah. yeah. And of course it's piracy as well, you know. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but we would never do anything uh, anything like that. Oh no! All the all pirate shit out of everything. It's your moral responsibility. Moral to... responsibility. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, it's the only way I'd ever want. I couldn't give Disney money. Like oh, after no. what... 
no. I mean, they they're the they're they're they're, they're bad in every way, really. Um, Even before they, the like it makes it legal to murder your wife, like I I just I'm, I don't want to give I don't want to give Disney money. No. Mm, yeah, and I, I don't certainly to... wouldn't want them to murder my wife. <laughs> that would be awful. No, that would be pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Um. There's there's one one more thing I've got on my notes here that I would like some feed sort of feedback second opinions or whatnot on because and Hang on, I, before, just like, sorry just before we move on are we okay with disney sponsorship i, I take I, that money i think do they own uh machinima i don't know i think they own i think they own everything at this point yeah i i'm pretty sure that with disney sponsorships they do make you sign a you can't badmouth disney Oh no, we would no. That would be part of our content. We have to be able to talk about how they uh, murder wives. Murder wives. Um, what else did they do? Um, like oh, they, they're backing. Shit. They're backing a lot of legislation in California to allow, like, so. I think California wanted to put forward some legislation to stop like sweatshop workers and things like that. Um, to stop, stop, you know, <laughs> importing things from social yeah. workers, and I think Disney fought pretty hard against that uh, that bit of legislation. Yeah, they avoided all that in Florida because they're basically they're they're basically functionally a separate country, right? They are literally yeah. a kingdom, yeah. literally. <laughs> <they're> <laughs> <their own people. laughs> um, but yeah, honestly, and all that stuff is terrible. But the thing that really bothers me about Disney, the thing that puts my back up the most, is they're just cultural pollution, just yes. banal, dull shit that's so fucking mm. pervasive. Well, I think it's more cultural imperialism in a way. Like it's just stamping over stuff because it's like they'll take a public domain fairy tale and then they'll. No, but again, that's true. But that is what makes me angry is just their corrosive, uh, the corrosive effects they have on what is considered, you know, art in the broad sense. Mm. Like just the you know the Marvel slop. Star Wars slop, the Disney like the Disney slop. <laughs> I know. I'm. It's it's bad. I'm. I'm not. I'm not proud of it. But like, <laughs> I've heard Andor's good. I, I intend to watch Andor. Andor's good. I I like them all. To be honest, I liked I liked Ashoka. I liked um, <laughs> I liked uh, I like Mandalorian. I liked what's the 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 I like the Acolyte. That was really good, and everyone in it was really sexy. Just like <laughs> I. This is the thing when you when you see the, here's the secret right and I don't want to be too identity politics about this but women are really good showrunners for Star Wars we figured out right bit late but it's like because the, the thing is yeah 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 I think she I think she's like she um Leslie Headland I think her name is the show isn't, isn't the fan base is it sexist because I've heard the, the fan base isn't happy with her right there's a lot of um yeah animals. and it's I, I think it's I think it's just bigotry because it was a solid circle. Right. It was it's bit basically because like there were there weren't that many white people in it. Not that I gave a shit, right? Like uh, one of those know. things, right? Yeah, there was. I mean, I'm sure there was a token white guy somewhere in it, but like, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, everyone in it was hot. Like, what are you complaining about? Like, yeah, you know, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, you know, cool with rep I don't think representation. Particularly does anything, but yeah, representation is good. Um, I, I mean, but, I don't, I don't um, care what ethnicity or race or whatever. They no, are. Like, yeah, it's yeah. just, it's fine, yeah. you know. Like, um, you know, I, I mean, it, I, when I say representation doesn't mm. do anything, of course, it's better to have people represented so they can see people who look like them. So blah blah blah. But it doesn't achieve mm. anything politically. Yeah. It, it is something that is nice to have, but it's not. It's not a political thing in that no, sense. It's a, it's but, a reflection. Um, but it's like it is. It is I, kind I, of weird when you've got shows that are like all white, like you know, just like oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, depending on you know if it's set in rural. Oh, Midsummer Murders, yeah, right. like for example, yeah, that you know. Well, even that you would think. Anyway, but okay, <laughs> so I, I, I'm pro representation, but I'm also pro objectification. I think the idea that we shouldn't objectify each other sexually, we are, you know, it's not everybody has to, but it's a thing that shouldn't be, you know, frowned upon. Like, you know, he's sexy, she's sexy. There's nothing wrong with thinking that. I refuse to admit that it wasn't delib the, the sexiness wasn't deliberate. If, you look, at, if you look at the audio descriptions. <laughs> Like they kind of like they go to town on some of the some of the descriptions. Like a sexy, it's... a sexy man walks into the kind of like <laughs> he disrobes. There is a disrobing. It's good, you know. Like, yeah, they kind of add a bit of sex into Star Wars, and it's kind of good. Like it's kind of. I do like... have a problem though with the Andor logo. I cannot. My brain refuses to see that as Andor. It looks like Anquir. It oh, looks okay. like A N Q I R. Okay, yeah. I, 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 
Oh. Yeah. But yeah, no, and and Andor's kind of good. It took me a few episodes to get into it, but it's it's like film noir. It actually is like it's kind of like Star Wars meets The Expanse in a little bit. Like yeah, I can see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, the thing I liked about the Acolyte was that it was a it was a riff of the old kung fu movies. So instead of having there was like. I liked that because it was set in the past. They had these big, clunkier lightsabers, but really there was a lot more cu- like kung fu kind of action, and the effects felt very much like those old Bruce Lee kind of you know kung fu movies. And it just uh, had, I did um, watch. Uh, I did watch. Uh, I, I now and then I watch uh, Red Letter Media, and I did watch Red Letter Media ripping the piss out of um, Acolyte. Mm. I mean, it's yeah, yeah, but I like. I don't I'm know. Probably. I. I I had a good old time with it for what it was. I, right? think, no, like, I think it's, it's fine. Um, when, 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 when I call all these things slop mm. and that, like I've got things that are slop that I enjoy. Like sometimes, mm. you, I mean, it's absolutely necessary for us to sometimes just switch our brains off and just watch mm. some slop and just, yeah. you know, it's recuperative. Um, yeah. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, snobby mm. in that way, but my problem with Disney is it's all they make and they make people think that's the, the pinnacle of culture. Mm, yeah 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 i think even i mean not to not to go too far to defend the new star warsy stuff i even think there's a like there's there's some social commentary in there like in the mandalorian they talk about how the new republic was so keen to demilitarize that they left themselves open to the pseudo fascists that come in in the new trilogy <laughs> Um, it's a bit neoliberal, right? Well, exactly. the The new republic is like it's 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 a criticism yeah. of neoliberalism, yeah. um, and and a, and a criticism of of was it like the new Democrat Party? Was that what Bill Clinton was was on about? Uh, I think you just cut yeah. out Drew, there a little bit. Is that oh, your thing? Cool. Oh, Drew, you're cutting out. Oh. You're roboting. Yeah. Uh oh. Do you want to reconnect? You might need to reconnect. Yeah. Oh. How do I can hear something? Oh, are you back? Am I back? I think you're back. I'm back. Okay, that's the first time that's happened. Oh. Was that a VPN issue or did you just reconnect or something? Uh no, I just I just checked uh, what we what my internet was doing, and then it was okay again. So just looking at uh, it fixed it. Just a dip, just a, just a dip. Uh, sorry, you were saying. Um, it's it's that thing we've talked about though, where you know, corporate particularly di- it's worse coming from Disney, but you know, mm. y- there are so many Disney films where the court, you know, a corporation is the baddie. The thing is explicitly mm. critical of corporate, you know, behavior and co- corporations owning too much and monopoly, mm-hmm. co- and then it's Disney. It's like it's okay. All they're demonstrating is that it doesn't fucking do anything. <laughs> Actually, I think what Andor does quite interestingly is it is that it explores the link between corporatism and fascism, <laughs> um, which is, you know, uh, yeah. Andor, and, is, Andor, yeah. Andor does sound interesting. It sounds like I don't think I don't think Star Wars is a very easy place to tell a you know an actually kind of grown up story. And again, that's not a criticism. You know, telling you know fairy tales is cool, um, and but Andor does seem to be that, which is interesting. Yeah, but it but it, it it's almost the case of like you wouldn't know it's Star Wars if unless someone told you. you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, there, then, I, and some... then I and then I'm like, well, I kind of wish it wasn't. You know, like why why does everything have to be? You know. Ah, uh, well, it, the reason I think it the reason why it does work in Star Wars is because it criticizes the broader universe. You know, the politics of the broader universe. Yeah, yeah. Like the the yeah. neoliberalism of the New Republic and the corruption of the New Republic and the rise of. Of of fascism or their version of fascism, imperialism, in in Star Wars, um, and it links. I think it links together quite nicely in in the world, but but at the same time, still being a bouncy fairy tale with robots and cute robots. And that's the thing. <laughs> like if you if you are determined to just see, like I'm just going to appreciate this as a surface level, silly robots, adventures in space, you know, spaghetti western. Um, then, then you will have a good time, and there is some depth to it, but it's not deep depth, and it's yeah. it, it's just like oh, oh, okay, yeah, you're talking about uh, it's stuff we already know. It's you know a lot of it is like reaffirming people's you know, yeah, yeah. It, it's not making any it's not making a, any real statements um, that haven't been made in anything else before, um, but it is interesting to see it in Star Wars. And well, I think what interested me about it is it's from what I've heard is it's it's an exploration of. Mm the bureaucracy of the empire yeah which 
honestly not not in a not like it was in the forefront of my mind but always you know back in the day when i watched star wars like that was, that's interesting like how does the empire like what is the sort of the labor force that's required to maintain this system um yeah. and yeah having a sort of conception of like how that might work that's interesting to me yeah and it, and it is interesting and of course and they're they... going to tap into yeah how did fascisms and authoritarianism function of course yeah, but it's, it's it, you know, it, the, but the, yeah, the Star Wars universe is an interesting universe that does seem to bounce between fascism and neoliberalism regularly, <laughs> which is well, it was made a lot of these a lot of these things that are made by sort of uh, yeah, boom, boomers coming out of the sixties and the counterculture, mm. um, like the the best they can imagine is neoliberalism, right? Like yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> so then, that's yeah. always the high yeah. point. Well, that's that's what I liked about the acolyte. Well, I, that, that's the interesting thing about the acolyte is that it, it, it. I don't want to say it sympathizes with the Sith, and by extension, then fascism, but it does hum humanize it, I guess. Well, I think for people way. with politics, where you know, I mean, I, you and me are slightly, but you know, I, where our politics are vaguely, where we're we're you know we're we don't love liberalism. Mm. Um, I think often, like you know, it's coming to Morrowind. You know, maybe Dagotha is the hero. You know, and like yeah. same with yeah, maybe the Sith had a point. You know, like the, <laughs> and especially if you watch the you know the prequels. Hmm. The is that the New Republic in the prequels? Yeah, it's New Republic, right? I think it's the New Republic. Yeah, no, oh, no, no, no. It's the old. No, it's it's. I think it's just the Republic. Is that just the whatever Republic the it is anyway Republic. in the in the, the prequels? Um, that is clearly a dysfunctional system. Oh yeah. Uh, and the Jedi are, you can't, like, if you watch the prequels, the Jedi are evil. Yeah. They are, they are the kind of um, police outfit you have in a repressive authoritarian re regime, right? They're the Stasi mm. or something. Yeah, no, they are, they are, they are, I mean, they're kind of not hugely dissimilar to our, like, I mean, like the Taliban in some ways, yeah, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah, because there's a religious component to it as well. Right? Yeah, it's theocratic, ultra conservative, ultra traditionalist. You can't yeah. love for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, horrible, aw horrible, awful. Mm, yeah, it's the yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, so the, the orthodoxy of that. And I like that the newer stuff is exploring the flaws of the Jedi a lot more because. You know, yeah, the Jedi are a, a religious order that are also a police force, which just yeah. is just kind of awful. Yeah, yeah. Which, yeah so, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I got a, uh, I got another topic. Oh, actually, I got yeah. two. Um, actually, since we're on media at the moment, I went to the cinema a couple of days ago and I saw Megalopolis by the that Coppola guy. What's his name? Francis Did, Ford Coppola. Is it? Uh. Uh, anyway, yeah, he did. He did. Okay, so Megalopolis, uh, which is a starring Adam Driver and a whole bunch of other like super all star cast. Um, I'll put something in the thing. Um, so this is kind of odd. It's not a good movie. I'm just going to say that off the top. It is not a good movie, <laughs> but it is an interesting movie. It is a very interesting movie um it's uh I, I can only say go and see the the trailer doesn't so basically coppola sold a big chunk of his vineyard to self-finance this film this is his magnum opus uh and he's like 85 now and yeah francis ford coppola and yeah so um i like i'm just gonna scroll down and have a look read read the cast just just you know, just just okay. So we've got Adam Driver, uh, Giancarlo Esposito, who plays the bad guy Gus in Breaking Bad. Um, More importantly, he's in Do the Right Thing as the dude whose trainer gets stepped on. Yeah. Uh, Natalie Emmanuel, Aubrey Plaza, Shia LaBeouf, uh, Lawrence Fishburne. Uh, let's see. This is like loads, right? Um, uh, there's miss they're missing one that i'm thinking that i'm uh anyway like there's like it's 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 crazy like loads of loads of, loads of famous people sorry i'm just gonna fix my camera <laughs> you're all very blurry yeah that's okay good. um so yeah so basically all-star cast self-funded movie 
it's basically Tommy Wiseau's The Room, but with a Hollywood budget and Hollywood actors. Um, <laughs> it's kind of amazing. What's what's the what's it's, the, it's, what's it's the, the room in what's that in the sense that it's like a vanity project or yes, in in, the, in it's right. a vanity project. It tries to be really smart. Uh, in, to the point where there's a chapter of the movie called Bread and Circuses. Like, it's just like, it's super on the nose <laughs> of like, what if this? What if that? It's like, it's like, it's a very pseudo intellectual movie um, that kind of like, it, 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 I don't even know what it's trying to say, right? Um, because basically, it, it's this misunderstood genius. This misunderstood genius is obviously a self insert. He's, he's invented this magical substance that doesn't they don't really describe what it is and what it does right it's like unobtainium right like he just he, he invents oh. unobtainium right so so they don't really flesh out whatever the MacGuffin is right but it's like he invents this this unobtainium and he's going to use this unobtainium to build the utopian city right and it's about this journey that he's trying to build this utopian city or this utopian district he plays the role of like the chief design engineer of this like city council and he's like right i'm going to i'm going to build this this chunk of city it's going to be modern it's going to be utopic everyone's going to live in harmony that's it and that is the extent of how the utopia is described right he just invents <laughs> a magical substance he just invents a utopia right like that's that's it like it doesn't yeah. talk about what makes it utopia the problem he talks about the problems of society being corruption and de and and um well, not decadence, decadence uh, hedonism you know like right, um yeah. and it's, it, it and it and it, it's got a very roman aesthetic uh and so so take that for what you will um and <laughs> Uh, I love it. I do, I do love it when multimillionaires come in and tell them the people the problem with the world is their hedonism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's I. I gotta be honest. There were a few moments that made me think. Err, like yeah. like Lawrence Fishburne plays the the driver, who is also the narrator, but Adam Driver the the misunderstood. And it just it doesn't feel it doesn't feel uh like there's nothing like wrong with it, but like it it doesn't feel quite. It feels Quite, a bit off. It feels a bit off, like you know. Yeah. Um. If it would, I'm sure there's like um. There's, I'm sure there's like a, like a a trope that 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 falls into with older films. Yeah. You know, the... I did notice that uh, I was like uh, John Boyd is in it. Mm. I noticed in the trailer, and he's um he's somebody who's not maybe maybe not like shunned or whatever, but he's he's come out with some very right wing views, and mm. is, is generally yeah, not you know. Yeah, I I would never defend the politics of this. If indeed there are politics in it, I'm not entirely sure yet. <laughs> you make everyone to watch it. It sounds like oh, yeah. it sounds an intriguing thing. Yes, it's an. See, the thing I appreciate about this film is that I've never seen anything like it. I probably will never see anything like it. Nothing like this couldn't be made if it wasn't like basically self-funded by a. Well, the really? name and, and also the aesthetics of the cut, that's clearly, it's Megalopolis. It's ripping mm -hmm. off of the names, just gone straight out mad when I was about to say it. Well, um, not, not like Metropolis or... Metropolis, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the, the Fritz Lang Metropolis, mm -hmm. like it's taking something from that. I don't know what. Mm -hmm. Um... Honestly, neither do I. Um, there's there's a lot of like weird references. So like, um, there's even a bit where one of the characters says, "Who will rid me of this meddlesome cousin?" Um, really? Yes. Like there's, um, <laughs> it's it. Uh, so Does basically, uh, sort of. Um, right. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know if I should spoil it because it's kind of yeah. No, I won't spoil it because it's kind of a weird moment. Um, but like, so basically, you've got this misunderstood genius architect, and he's at odds with the mayor, who is like, so the mayor represents like tradition, orthodoxy, and status quo, and then this misunderstood genius represents, you know, the imagination of the future, like almost Elon Muskish in that. I was going to say, like, yeah, it, it does, it does, idea. yeah, it 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 does feel a bit Elon Musky, um, but the thing, like, the direction is. Is, is interesting in fact there are certain scenes when they're set out that look like straight out of a hitchcock movie like there's obviously references I mean, to coppola is is what i mean he's godfather right and godfather mm. is very often you know if somebody lists top 10 films ever godfather will often be number one yeah i, I don't agree with that at all but it's a very godfather is a beautiful film to watch like the cinematography is sumptuous 
Yeah. And um, actually, this was a beautiful film to watch. Yeah, On an aesthetic sure, yeah, level, yeah. I saw lots of stuff that either I haven't seen in a modern film or I've never seen mm -hmm. at all. Like, it's it was fascinating about this and i think i want to like watch like three hour video essays on youtube about this film because i'm not a super film buff so there's going to be a lot in there that i know it's oh that's something that they're going to talk about that's something they're going to talk, but yeah, i don't know right. how they're going to talk about it right like i've got i've still got a lot to learn about this film um <laughs> <laughs> uh what was interesting there was no marketing about this film um mm -hmm. i went when i went to the cinema there was posters for every other film that they were showing or going to show not this one um, it only made like $2 million on opening night. It's an absolute flop. <laughs> and they were only showing it one time a day, one time each day in the in the cinema right, to, right. where they would usually show like a big film, like a Star Wars. They'd be say, showing everything, multiple... everything you're saying is making me want to watch it more. I do, I do love mm. it when you see something like this. That it's such a mm. personal authored mm. thing. And you're like, it's not good, but there's something, it's making me think things. Yeah, it's, it's, it is making me think things. And it... <laughs> I I I did enjoy it, even though like I someone someone billed it to me as the worst film they've ever seen. The cinema was in hysterics. I can't believe how bad it was. Mm. I didn't quite get that mm. because, and I think maybe it's because I appreciated some of the things that it failed at. Uh, I, yeah, if that makes sense. Like clearly, Coppola just he's just shot his heart out there. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, 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 and and it's not all great but like <laughs> i tell you i just i am so i'm so happy that i went to the cinema and saw something that completely i never saw before like i mean okay first thing i'll say is i'm gonna watch this uh yeah. i want to have a conversation with you after i've watched it because it seems like that we've got stuff to dig into potentially yeah. um but it it, it 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 speaks to something that i i, I think about quite a lot which is mm -hmm. like we shouldn't we shouldn't put artists on pedestals in the way we do Mm -hmm. And expect that, like, again, Francis Ford Coppola, he made The Godfather, one of the best regarded films in cinema history, beautiful cinematography, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Like, somebody making one masterpiece is enough. We shouldn't expect them to be... And I feel the same way about mm -hmm. Ridley Scott. Like, Alien, it's an amazing film. film it's overstated, mm -hmm. I think, often, but it's an amazing film in a lot of ways. Ridley Scott has not made anything else good. <laughs> like, yeah. and people, people will say um, uh, Blade Runner, but no, it's fucking boring. It's, like, beautiful, but boring. Um, I think I think we should if if a director makes something good, our expectation should be well. That's the good thing they've made. Like we're not going to expect anything else from them, rather mm. than they made a, they made a masterpiece. So we're going to expect every single thing they make afterwards to be a masterpiece. Yeah, but I I mean I'm glad this film was made. I'm glad I saw this yeah. film. Right, to, because to contrast it, the film I saw before this at the cinema, which was like a couple of weeks before that, um, was Deadpool versus Wolverine or Deadpool and Wolverine. I was Which just about to say, as you're, I've not seen it obviously, but as you're describing it, mm. I'd rather watch that than mm. another Marvel film. I'd rather yeah. watch a failure that's trying something than mm. you know. Yeah, yeah, and 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 I completely, completely back that. Like, yeah, a Deadpool and Wolverine was exactly what I expected. It was Marvel slop. It was, you know, yeah. it was, yeah. it was an evening. It was, it was something to do in an evening, but that was about the extent yeah. of it. Like, I don't even. Not sure it's entertaining. I... Not something. Not for a second. We're saying they're not. Ent they're literally mm. fucking engineered. They're you know micro engineered to be entertaining for sure. Yeah. But, you know they're not fulfilling in any way. No, no. In fact, I don't even. You know the the, the Weatherspoons tea I probably had before the cinema was probably more fulfilling. <laughs> um, it was it was a it was a cauliflower curry and it was really fucking good actually. I do you know what I'm a recent convert to cauliflower. I've I've never mm. liked cauliflower, uh, but every now and then you know you, you got to try things that you think you don't like, see whether because mm. it changes, right? Mm. Um, yeah, my sister made some cauliflower cheese with us with a Sunday uh, dinner, and mm. I oh loved it, and now I'm I'm fully on yeah, cauliflower is mm. great. Oh, cauliflower! There's so much you can do. do you, my I've always enjoyed cauliflower and curries. To be fair, you know when yeah, it's yeah, soaked in all that. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Um, and what I like, what, my favorite way to do cauliflower is to like first of all start off by boiling it or stick it in the microwave so you've softened it up then uh just add a bunch of like paprika and barbecue type spices and then mm. maybe some barbecue sauce on top of it and then just stick it in and roast it so you've yeah. kind of got like basically like barbecue wings but they're cauliflower <laughs> mm. yeah yeah deep fry it in batter that's another good one like you can do so much with cauliflower and it's absolutely i mean it's not the healthiest way to have cauliflower is to deep fry it in a batter but it's good it's fine yeah it's, it's got nutrition you know yeah 
maybe too much nutrition in some cases but you know um yeah you can do a lot with uh, yeah, that was a digression back to back to megalopolis because I'm, I'm uh, interested yeah it's colorful it's beautiful what what is interesting is that there is a lot of visual metaphors that work in the world that is kind of surreal uh right. so like like you see like lady liberty um a statue like lady lady liberty but she is like in agony in moving in agony and stuff like that um, it all sounds very like heavily symbolist but in a very on the nose kind of almost yes. like e level e kind of way yes by somebody who can direct aesthetically as well as mm. francis Ford coppola which is that is an interesting combination of things Yes, it's a person who thinks they're a lot smarter than they are, but is very good at cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of the things I do yeah. love about it is that the the Adam Driver character, um, which is kind of interesting that they made him cut his hair because he they kind of done him dirty. He looks a lot better with long hair. He looks <laughs> awful with short hair. Uh, I don't know if that was by design, but um, he um, he has this superpower where he can stop time, and it but it doesn't go anywhere right like it literally has <laughs> a lot zero of, a consequence lot of what you're saying sounds like it doesn't go anywhere it's just yeah like, it's, it's ideas that'd be yeah cool. this would be cool and it's like so so he doesn't save the day with this power he doesn't he doesn't really do and, and here's the thing maybe if i watch like a whole bunch of youtube video essays once it's you know had time to breathe maybe i'll know what it means maybe it'll mean something maybe it is consequential maybe there are beats behind the scene that i've, I've got to join together and it's a puzzle that you've got to work out um but then it doesn't feel like that because so much of it is on the nose um yeah so he, he, right, can, he can stop right. time does it mean that like is he actually stopping time is it in his imagination does it mean something is it a metaphor but then <laughs> another character sees him stopping time so it's obviously but then but but then and then the movie ends it's like mm. okay. <laughs> so oh, yeah I really, I really i really want to watch it and talk about it with you yeah it's kind of and i'm like yeah like i enjoyed it even though it's a bad film, I, and does that make it a good film? I don't want to. No, no, no. You can enjoy. You can enjoy a bad film. Yeah. No, I think that's mm. it's. I'd rather again. I'd rather have that the Marvel slot where you know you know going in yeah. exactly how you're going to feel all the way through and at the end, mm. rather than something that's mm. like, did I, I like that? Yeah. And here's <laughs> there's one scene. There's one scene I actually really enjoyed. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but it's like a press conference, and I think they were unveiling something, and they had the mayor there, and they had the um uh. What's his name? Caesar. Oh, they kept, yeah, he was called Caesar. There's a lot of on-the-nose <laughs> Roman stuff here, right? Like, just, so, um, so yeah, C Caesar and the mayor are, like, they're at this unveiling, right? And there's press conferences and there's, like, celebrities and academics and they're all around. And in this, in this event, they actually have a debate about, um, like, basically idealism versus pragmatism. Like, we need short-term solutions. We need to make sure people are housed and fed right now. And then, and then Caesar's like, but we need a long-term goal for the future. For if there is not hope, then what? Where are we going as a society and stuff like this? And it's like, do you know what? We would never have a conversation like this in real, like in real life at a press conference or something. But I really wish we did. I really wish we just like had these random philosophical conversations that just break out, like Deus Ex, like or something yeah, like that. You yeah, know? yeah, 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 yeah. And it's like yeah. kind of like yeah, maybe it's like the Deus Ex of films, like. <laughs> Yeah, because I mean, we're going to get into this on the Deus Ex thing we're doing, but Deus Ex is like we enjoy the story of it, we enjoy the conspiracy setting, all that stuff, but it is it doesn't really add up to anything. It's all over the fucking place in terms of like what it thinks is good, and you're like, yeah, yeah, and, and and it's not like a good game. It's not a good shooter. No, <laughs> no, I, you know, it's no. it's an okay yeah, stealth no, every, game. It's one, of those, it's one of those some of its ingredients things, right? Every every little bit of it is like quite bad, but it adds up to this beautiful, amazing thing. Yeah, and it's kind of maybe like maybe this yeah maybe Megalopolis is a yeah. bit like it. It's like well, yeah, the story and the politics of it are a bit like uh, wishy washy. Um, what I found interesting is that there there is like a third faction that comes in that is kind of the fascist faction, and yeah. the fascists come from actually within the the like the the aristocracy, uh, which I found is uh, yeah that makes sense. Interesting. Yeah, uh, they also have some interesting sex scenes. Yeah, uh, you know. Have you watched the uh, Have you watched the new the newer Dune films? No, I haven't. No. 
I mean, I, I, I'm not, I don't, I have no particular love for Dune. I've, I'm halfway through the first film uh, of the new ones, mm. and it was incredibly fucking boring. I've heard the second one is very good, and the second one makes the first one good in kind of retrospect. But Dune, Dune as a series is all, is all about fascism. It's all about, mm. yeah, what I mean, particular aspects of fascism. But mm. yeah, I mean, yeah. You, you might, you might find that interesting. Mm. Yeah, and also, and this is a bit of a spoiler. But I don't even know if I can spoil it because you'll never see anything coming. Like this film doesn't even make enough sense for me to properly spoil it. But <laughs> so, so what happens at, at like in the final sort of to, to kick off the final act of the film is this random Soviet satellite just crashes into the city, leaving a <laughs> leaving a space open for this this utopian district to get built. Yeah. and it's like it's like Chekhov's Soviet satellite and it just goes over it's got yeah, the, the hammer yeah. and sickle on it it's like obviously this is some symbolism isn't it like yeah. like yeah. you know I'm not entirely sure I understand the symbolism is it the like, ideas of the past clearing space but, but it's all like yeah. it's all very it, mm, that's a bit too yeah uh, yeah, yeah yeah but the but the, I love the fact that the utopia is just and he builds the utopia and it's wonderful the end it's like <laughs> And, he, and and eventually, yeah, like, and it's not like, uh, like, um, and it, oh, it's very operatic, right? Like, it was so much. See, I think the thing is, if you watch the film as an opera, I think it makes a lot more sense. I think this is actually an opera that you just watch on a screen, um, because it felt very much like that. They were like, like, not in terms of people are singing. Yeah, um, people aren't singing, but there is a very operatic soundtrack like you know classically okay. Okay. music yeah soundtrack's lovely actually um and and it, it kind of adds a lot to it um which I mean, I quite you, made, you made me want to watch it you absolutely made me want to watch i'm gonna it. watch it again like it's it's i'm it's it's, it's crazy what was um uh, what it's oh it's got 5.1 on imdb which <laughs> see the thing is i would kind of give good. it like i would kind of like i would actually kind of give it like a nine because of really? how much I thought about it since I watched the film, like a film that yeah. stays in your head that much is 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 like you know okay, rotten, like for rotten example, tomatoes, Rotten Tomatoes has got forty seven percent with critics and thirty five percent with audience. It's I mean it's hard to follow. It's an absolute <laughs> clusterfuck. So I can understand. It sounds, it sounds interesting, and again, I'd rather watch something interesting, even if it's yeah. fucking terrible. Just something you'll yeah. never, you'll never watch I, anything like it. It's like, yeah, even if it does not. I mean, it, it does sound like kind of like I can't remember what we were saying about it before, but you know, when you get a, a liberal boomer, essentially, mm. who's come out yeah. of the you know the sixties and that like not hugely politi politically educated, trying to say mm. things about politics, and you're going to get you're going to get yeah. either. You know, authoritarianism is bad, isn't it? And war's terrible, but sometimes you need war. You're going to get that, you know, Star Wars, or, and Star Trek, to what I just said, or you're going to get fucking incoherent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just, uh, yeah. Like, it's man, like, man in the pod, man in the pod politics, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It's like, all you got to do is invent the unobtainium, and then you build a city out of the unobtainium, and then it's all fine. I say that, right? I say that. Full awareness that you know I'm that sometimes we all we all are. We, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just a man man down the pub. In, you know, this is very much a man down the pub podcast, really, isn't it? You know, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, but then I kind of like that. Like, I like that that the people who 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 watch us like disagree with us a lot. Of the, like, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, for sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's like we're not we're not like influencers in the way that we influence people in terms of that way. Like. We're not, you know, we're not telling anyone what to do or even trying to tell anyone what to no. do. Well, the thing, like, I, I do change change my ideas a fair bit or re yeah. revise them, you know? Like, I'm wrong a lot of the time. So There is one, one thing, and you like, you kind of made me think of it with the Megalopolis, is because mm. you mentioned uh, video essays. Uh, you know, we're, we're talking about middle brow. Oh, yeah. One middle brow thing I'm very sick of is video essays that take something very kind of low culture and talk about it in very important terms as if it is high. like this is what we've been given now this mm. this is this is our culture so we have to pretend that it's f so fucking important because it's all we fucking got now we don't we have no political power we've got no power over our labor or anything like that all we've got is culture so we have to pretend that that is so fucking important and there's so many goddamn video essays on youtube like i watched one a few years ago about it was just 
what, when did The Simpsons go to shit? And it was just, mm. it, they've got, they've always got this, uh, the, the Simpsons was a TV show that was important to many people. You know, they've got this mm. over inflatedly important way of like, just the voice. And that for some reason, they're often Irish, the people talking. I think that um, for some reason, the Irish accent in that low kind of tone, speaking intelligent words, just has this kind of connotation of elevating some, I don't know. Just, I'm, but I'm so sick of, Pretending the, the unimportant. <laughs> you are sorry. Sick of the, I'm <laughs> sick of the Irish. I'm sick. Of, I'm sick of pretending unimportant things are important. That really fucking bothers me. The Simpsons is not worth talking about like that. I uh, there is a profoundness to the Simpsons, but I know I take your point on other things. <laughs> so no, I'm not saying yeah no absolutely there, there can be a profundity to, to the Simpsons but it is not as a whole mm. as a work you know as an artistic oeuvre of whatever is not worth mm. that I mean one person making a video like that sure yeah let's mm. treat this let's treat Simpsons Simpsons as an important cultural blah blah and talk about but when we're awash with that fucking shit yeah you know whether it's fucking Doctor Who or I mean talk about you know. We're talking about the expanse, and but we, I don't. We're not doing it in that video essay way. We're talking about, mm. oh, what did this mean? That was interesting. What do you think of this? Like that. That's something. Mm. Talking about things is fine, but br like talking about them as if you're talking about like the works of Caravaggio. You know, it's not on the same. It's not the same fucking thing. Again, it's like it's like beer connoisseurs. It's exactly that. <laughs> Do you know? I've, I, I'm sure I've mentioned this before. Yeah, yeah. Water con uh, water sommelier. The water sommelier. What's that? Have you seen? You see? Do you know the water sommelier? I've told you about the water sommelier, right? Maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. Well, I, I think mean, you're, sorry, you just reminded me now of. Uh, <laughs> God, okay. I, I watched a video. There, there's a woman YouTuber that I linked the other day, and she she she's mainly just physics. She, she's a she's a physicist, um, but she was doing a video about uh, who's that idiot celebrity? Oh, Gwyneth Gwyneth Paltrow. Mm -hmm. You know, she says like stupid things about like her diet and stuff. And and, and she said, um, I like uh, in the morning, I drink I drink a glass of alkaline water with a dash of lemon. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, alkaline water, it doesn't make it. There's nothing. It's it's just water. But secondly, even if you believe alkaline water is something, as soon as you put a dash of lemon in it, you're just making water. <laughs> Are, oh yeah, because it's lemons lemon acidic. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. She made an hour long video about this, and it's very entertaining. But um, what got? Oh, oh yeah, and uh, within that video, she refers to oh, who's that? Who's that YouTuber? The Asian lad. He's got like kind of a chubby face, and he does like comedy things. Prog, 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 something. Very famous YouTuber. Anyway, him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he did a little bit. That was like it was essentially any time you go to the subreddit about a hobby, and he was just doing, uh, he was just doing like drinking water, and he was just doing an impression of like what the people on the Reddit about drinking. It was like you have to have this kind of water, and you have to drink it at this temperature, and like, <laughs> like, like like subreddit. You know, you go to the photography subreddit, and they're like, oh no, you've got the wrong kind of camera. You need eighteen fucking lenses. You need this five thousand pound camera. Otherwise, why are you fucking bothering? You know that kind of yeah, treat, treating things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it all it all fits together i'm rambling but it all fits together yeah mm. um but yeah uh megalopolis fucking yeah like i say i don't no, know yeah no, like no. solidly it's a solidly i don't know like i can't like i mean it's not that i can't think of anything wrong with it i can think of hundreds of things wrong oh, with yeah. It. yeah 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 there's much more wrong with it than there is right with it but i enjoyed <laughs> it yeah. and like there's a bit right oh my god Oh God! There's a bit where they sell the virgin, like like some of the metaphors are just literally on the nose. Like they're just like, like yeah. It's basically it's Rome falls and this misunderstood genius is the only one who can save it by building a city out of unobtainium. Uh, you know that's. The, <laughs> no, I, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's a bit longer than it needed to be. It's two and a half hours long, and considering it didn't actually say that much, um, <laughs> but it's interesting. It visually visually spectacular like i love the use of cgi in it it's a really good it's a really good example of how like it's it's obviously cgi because you know with shards of glass yes. and all that you know like yeah. Yeah. i mean you can see from the trailer like it's it's they're not hiding away from the fact that it's all cgi but it works like it's, it's an artistic choice and it is an artistic movie and 
yeah, like I, th th there's lots of throwback stuff. There's going to be a lot of references to stuff that went over my head. Um, and the more I think about it, like the more I just like, <laughs> it's nice. It's it's good. Yeah, like not good as in quality good. It's no, yeah, just like, no, no, yeah, an interesting time. Yeah, like if you look at the um, if you look at the reviews on all these sites, they'll there's always going to be someone that says it was an experience. That's how they describe <laughs> it. Like is an experience um and it's an no i would yeah. I, yeah in 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 and sometimes i just want slop like i say you want to switch your brain off you mm. just want slop but if i'm looking for if i'm looking to be you know stimulated i'd rather have something that yeah that's trying something and failing than you know another yeah. whatever what you know, another marvel film another you know whatever yeah, yeah for sure yeah um so yeah i i guess i mean it's still in cinemas as of now um I don't know for how much longer and it's not like yeah you have to go like the one time of the day that they're going to show it <laughs> uh but i yeah i'm going to watch it when it comes out on video again and or oh, video like wh where's this the 90s <laughs> um I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah i'll rent it from blockbuster i think and and see where see where it gets me i yeah and, and well, it's i like, mean you just tape it off the tv yeah yeah and also oh there's a bit right oh there's an interesting bit here right um, so there's a scene where Adam Driver is trying to have a conversation with the audience, right? Breaks the fourth wall in a very direct right. way. Right. In the original version of the film, like the very first, like when they screened it on the first day, the plan was that someone from the cinema staff was going to go oh. in and they were going to say, um, they were going to say a line. It was something like, but what if there is something to be afraid of, right? Like in the middle of, it's basically like in the middle of this <laughs> I monologue. Love that. Yeah. And um, and I think if you go to the uh, what they call the true IMAX experience, that I think they're supposed to do that. And I was kind of wondering going into this film, look, it, you know, it wasn't the first showing; it was some random time in the middle of the week. Is some like minimum wage? Uh, I'm going to say, you know, like some, I don't know why I'm like picking this place, but some, you know, some dingy cinema, cinema in Bradford, mm. you know, just yeah. someone. What What do you mean? Yeah. <laughs> no, and I. I think in Not the first like, <laughs> I think in the first round of in the first round of um, screenings, I think they had a like a real hard time actually getting either the, yeah. like the the instructions out there or the staff you know to get the staff to give a shit or something, because when I saw the film, it was a it was an off, off camera voice that I think they probably put right, in right right because I think when because when the person who recommended it to me saw it. Um. The, oh yeah, they did. The, the 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 staff didn't come out, so there was like this missing line in the film, and they like, yeah. And it's that's, like they, that's they, making me think. You know, you know the bit in Jurassic Park near the beginning where where uh, Richard Attenborough mm. is um, he's doing the pinprick thing. He, there's a presentation. There's, there's him on the screen, and then he goes and pricks his own finger like for the to show that you know blood has dna in it blah 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 oh yeah and you always wonder like th does that mean that richard attenborough has to be present every time that presentation <laughs> is given like this billionaire is going to be present every time somebody's getting a tour of the park is yeah maybe yeah. think of that and also maybe think of like cinema in the 50s where uh they had like they had gimmicks in the cinemas mm. like like vibrating chairs you know just for one particular film like the chair would mm. vibrate or electrocute you or something like that and yeah. like i, I smell kind of like that idea yeah we like making sure. making cinema more of a participatory kind of theatrical kind of experience yeah getting the getting getting the mm. staff involved and it just it makes yeah somebody like you know somebody somewhere with a very strong accent just in britain you know, mm. talking to these American film stars <laughs> just in their own regional accent. I love that. That sounds that amazing. Great. Yeah. I yeah, I kind of wish that had sort of you know I, I mean if anyone has seen the film and, and they did do it, then like let us know. Yeah. Uh but like I yeah, no, it was it, they they ended up just subbing it out for an off screen voice at the end of the uh because <laughs> like cause yeah, like who's cause you have to come in, it's like halfway through the film. So <laughs> it's not like it's at the beginning or at the end where they can where it's easy to sort of <laughs> <laughs> out. Yeah. yeah but then i, I suppose that's i want somebody to make a movie where you have to have a pianist in the cinema again yeah, just playing, yeah. The sound, like, music, playing the soundtrack yeah yeah man god pianists were like stuffed with work back then weren't they 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, but i suppose that's that speaks to coppola's aid really doesn't it like he he probably remembers all of that shit that's the stuff <laughs> that's probably what he wanted to recreate like he probably I was in the cinema maybe. Maybe. yeah he might be in the cinema as like a like a little wee lad with his, his like big I, got, I, gotta say, I do <clears throat> Again, this is this is a little bit like I'm the main character, but like people mm. people who whinge about people laughing or talking in the cinema. Mm. Um, it, it, if you go to the cinema, that it is a social. Everybody's so fucking antisocial mm. now. It's a social experience. If people are talking about the film, that's mm. kind of and it's not as if somebody talking about the film is going to make you not hear this fucking mm. mega loud eight point one dolby fucking mm. whatever right like enjoy the social aspect of it we should get back into that yeah actually this this is interesting in that it's a film right if you go to the cinema like it's this only didn't didn't just happen to me but this happened to everyone i know who's seen the film when the film ends and the lights come up and the lights come up directly as the credits start like the credit the like yeah. they make no business don't don't bother like it's almost like you don't have to stay to the end of the credits that's kind of There's like no post it, credit don't worry about no it. yeah and the lights no, go up, and it's like everyone like was like, "What the f what the fuck did we just watch?" Like it, it, that, <laughs> was, like we everyone had shares ex shared experience. Yeah, the say, yeah, shared human experience. Love it. Yeah. And also, there's one scene that fucking blew me away. Right, Adam Driver puts on a cape and he does a little, <laughs> and it's just, and it, but it's super serious. It's not a comedy yeah. moment. <laughs> It's just like he's like um, he's like I bid you adieu, and then just struts off. It's just amazing in a completely non-ironic way. It's just like I yeah, want to watch I, it so much now. Mm, oh yeah, I mean I don't know I don't know if you'll be able to get something off Pirate Bay or something, but like I'm gonna wait till something better than a than a. Than oh a yeah, actually, because like, it's such I a beautiful. I don't, yeah, film. I don't want to cam. Yeah. And it's yeah, and also like you'll be yeah, some of the stuff you'll be surprised how unoriginal it is. Like it literally I don't it's probably not by accident either. Like there's so much referential um you know derisive stuff. Not derisive? No, um what's the word? Derivative stuff in it that yeah, is yeah, you know yeah. uh, it's his magnum opus, it's his it's his fond farewell to cinema, I suppose, you know, like I love that. Yeah. I, I love the fact that it was it's a, it's such a sincere film as well. Like it's yeah, you know I I'd, I'd like yeah. to make something like it myself if I'm completely honest. Like <laughs> this is like you know what yeah I just want something that's a bit mad and you know what you know. we should do we should do a version you know the Swedish thing with Twitter you were talking about this week oh yeah 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 so once a year somebody mm. selected from the public at random and they're given like whatever whatever like the mean film budget is these days like 500 million mm. and they and it's just like make a movie let's get a random yeah. random person once a year from the public to make a movie that'd be great like jury service <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah i i mean i i i think that's kind of interesting i, I like because the thing is you wouldn't have been able to make this movie if it wasn't self-funded if it wasn't a vanity project there's mm. no way there's no way uh well like at this point in his career like after mm. godfather he could have got mm. fucking anything made right mm. and it, but it's it's that point where you've showed, what i was talking about earlier you've talked you know a genius can only make one or two masterpieces so yeah mm. you, you slowly learn oh we can give them all the money in the world they're not going to make anything amazing mm. um yeah so at the start of his career i'm sure he could but now yeah it has mm. to be mm. he's trying to recapture something i'm sure and it has to be self funded i'm i i i do wonder like it, how uh, how the fact how a film being self-funded changes things in term like yeah like because you're spending your own money so well i mean cinema cinema's gone through phases of um being very much a, a sort of a team thing mm. to being a very authored uh direct you know the director's in charge he is the author kind of mm. thing back to kind of it being more of a cooperative thing it, it oscillates between those two things um and i think yeah i'm not sure what phrase we're but not sure what my mm. point was there um well this is this is an authored thing yeah this is very <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah this is this, this this is not like you can see like design by committee is a, is kind of tragic in a lot of cases like it's the death of creativity mm. Mm. and I and, I and this is obviously the opposite of that and it's it's creative 
you know like it's yeah, yeah. yeah. like it's it's yeah and i i i guess i i guess i didn't even realize how devoid of something new my life was until i saw this which is kind of sad in a way you know <laughs> not, not my life in general in, in like in terms of my my viewing life you know yeah 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 and that's a box quote <laughs> so yeah I, I don't know check it check it's like yeah it's good never, it. i've like, never heard you talk about a piece of media for this long i know it's weird isn't it you don't usually get like you're not i think i get quite excitable about things that i've watched but you don't usually so this is interesting yeah well, yeah, I've never seen anything like it. <laughs> so, you know. Have yeah. you seen Metropolis? <laughs> uh, no, I haven't. You should give Metropolis a watch because I'm sure there's mm. clearly there's clearly parallels and also it's a very mm. it's a very, very good film. Yeah. Even though it's absolutely ancient. It's it's shocking mm. how much it watches like you can't watch any other film from because mm. it's from like the twenties. You can't even watch a film from the forties, maybe, but like you watch films from the twenties and thirties and they're like alien artifacts. Mm. They're not they, they don't represent they don't um resemble modern cinema in any way whatsoever but you watch metropolis and it's a silent fucking film right hmm. and, you know black and white filmed in i think the early 20s but it feels like modern you know in, in, not completely obviously but it, in a lot of ways it feels like watching a modern film it's kind of amazing oh wow it'll be in the public domain then i take it oh yeah 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 no you can get it on uh archive.org i'm sure oh, fantastic okay it was re-released with a, a Queen soundtrack, which um, and I love. I love Queen. I think Queen are amazing musicians, but I think for me, it distracts from mm. rather than adds to. I'd rather watch it. Um, yeah, silent. Would honestly. would you see? I'm thinking now, not to be too like generational. Do you think Zoomers would like? They they would have like background music if they were watching a silent film, right? Because <laughs> it's like I mean that was how they, that's how they were, you know, in the cinema, the silent movies. Oh, yeah. They were, I mean, the, the pianist would just freestyle basically. They try and fit it with what was happening, but they they weren't given like mu I mean, maybe later on, but at least mm. the start, they weren't given cheap music or anything. It was just like, oh, it's ha this is a love scene. Let's play something romantic, you know. Oh, so it's, it's kind of, and then oh, okay, that makes me sort of really like I, it's like not stock music it's like what like because like i i kind of dislike i've kind of grown a dislike for stock uh stock music because <laughs> it's just noise to fill yeah, the silence yeah. so that so that you can't hear the voices in your head mm -hmm. and it's like well you know I, i'd like give me some space for reflection um yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it's i i i, no, I guess with, it's with, with every development of cinema it's always interesting that like yeah when um when uh, talkies came in, when quite quite soon talkies came in, they, the ability to record audio, uh, well, and put it with film, um, like a lot a lot of the sort of the artistic community around film was like, oh, this is this is terrible. This is ter we don't like this is going to ruin cinema. Um, and then color when color came in, it was like, no, this mm. is going to ruin. <laughs> it's going to ruin cinema. <laughs> yeah. Oh. And, and and I can see their point with silent because with with mm. silent cinema it's all about the picture. Yeah. Everything that you've got to be want to convey it, it it's entirely mm. the picture. Um, yeah. So I see their point. Yeah, yeah. I um yeah I'll have to I'll have to check that one out. I um yeah. I'm I, now I'm just thinking of when I saw La Traviata the opera and that was like obviously it wasn't silent but um <laughs> the uh it was it was like yeah this it was it was like they framed the whole set like a like yeah. it was almost like a picture like a oh that's cool uh, yeah maybe like a oh like uh something from like like a, like maybe like 1700s or something like you know some yeah kind of that um i can't i can't remember. no maybe 1800s yeah maybe i don't know when was la traviata supposed to be like yeah mid 1800s or something I, I like when was it yeah. written or when was it set oh when was it set yeah um uh, oh 1848 novel okay so oh yeah mid 1800s yeah yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, and it looked very beautiful. They had a they had a, like a haze machine that put like this this film of haze over the. That's cool. Over the set, yeah, it was good and it was quite amusing, really, because they have a lot of party scenes in La Traviata, and um, one of them was like a a, a, a matador scene, 
but the matador was wearing a giant synthetic ass. No reason for it. <laughs> just like a giant, you know. It's just like, yeah, nice big, you know, Nicki Minaj big butt, you know. It was, it was... <laughs> Love it. Yeah, yeah I, I kind of like opera. It's good. I saw um, The Magic Flute, which actually this kind of remind me a little bit of The Magic Flute because it kind of had a little bit of the, uh, you know, King of the Day, Queen of the Night kind of, uh, yeah. kind of vibe to it. Um, the old, the new, forward, backwards, tradition, modernism, you know, that kind of. And, I mean, also, um, um, you know, uh, it's a trite to say almost, but like, yeah, when Magic Flute was first put on, like the audiences did not get it. Didn't I? Oh. It was too. It was you know. It was too. It was too new. It was too forward. Um, mm. It was trying to make too big a step. And yeah, the, the, I mean, this yeah. This, I don't know how apocryphal it is, but yeah, audiences walked out, kind of thing. Oh wow! Because I, I when the version I saw uh, at the Millennium Centre in Wales, because the thing is, in in Wales, opera is like subsidised by the Arts Council, so you can go and see an opera yeah. for like really good yeah. price. Yeah. Like if you're in Wales, particularly in Cardiff, check out the opera. Like it's yeah. you'll get some really good tickets, really good seats at like. 30 quid 25 quid like for, for a night out for, oh, for opera, opera. opera great ballet ballet i've only seen the ballet a couple of times uh but ballet, i love ballet ballet was great yeah it's worth it for the music alone you know like yeah you know and but yeah so um and 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 the the millennium center is a lovely venue like the seats are really comfortable the acoustics are just like designed for it um yeah. it's just it's yeah and, and the coffee's nice just as you know and it's it's <laughs> yeah um, it's, it's all right anyway um yeah and they did the magic flute but they did it in like a 90 like a like a 1980s retro futurism you know with like the synth wave aesthetic and lasers and led lighting and stuff and <laughs> um a lot of um a lot of the the posh families brought brought like relatively young kids like 10 year olds to it and they loved yeah. it and it's like yeah like it was like basically it was a kind of opera that like is a good first opera and yeah. um yeah yeah like i love the creativity for it um you know they they did a spin on it i loved how like yeah it just it, it looked good they kept the um the soundtrack and everything you know like all the music was was the, was original done with a full orchestra and um there's something yeah. even if, yeah even if the opera itself what the present the mm-hmm. production wasn't great like there's just something about being in the presence of an orchestra that doesn't like it, it's not like being a pop pop music Con- I mean, pop- popular music concert. Mm. It's like you vibrate, like you literally yeah. feel the vibe. Like you feel it in your body when you see an orchestra. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, yeah. There was actually what it reminds me of the, one of my favorite news stories that I ever reported on. It was it was only well, I say only. It was a um, commemoration of a local artist, and he had a very successful and artistic family. Um, there were there were family members that have done have worked on soundtracks of of Hollywood movies of like big stage productions. Um, there was there were there were people from the uh, Sydney Symphony Orchestra, I think it was, and you know all over the world. And they like they flew in some of the like they were seriously some of the best musicians like you, today, and they, and they all like they flew in for this this um, uh, memorial, and they did various they did a set of of music all different types of music and uh, like oh well there's like um mozart they did um hansel and gretel with humperdinck and all that kind of stuff uh you know so it was, it was uh, and and they were they were playing with strings and like in this old ballroom like with the wooden floors and yeah everything and it you could feel the music just like yeah seep through the floorboards into your body and yeah, yeah, I, yeah. i've never experienced anything like it in my life and i'm not a big yeah, music well, guy one of, the best, one of the best places for like, classical music was at like a very old a very, an old church with a wooden floor mm-hmm. like a big building with a wooden i think the wooden floor just adds <laughs> yeah like it's it acts as an amplifier essentially right i or, or like a, a like i don't know like something that like like a, a conduit in you know or something yeah, like it resonates yeah it it turns the air into music or something like you know yeah no yeah live orchestral music is, is I think it's kind of magical and I do I think it's incredibly important it's good that the arts council is fun, arts council I mm. guess funding that yeah. stuff yeah, yeah. yeah. because no, that stuff that kind of stuff should be super accessible yeah and and it is you know it's 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 good to see like families at the at the opera it's good yeah. to see you know and and you, you, there's no dress code or nothing there were people there in in yeah. you know all, mostly streetwear and stuff and 
um it's yeah like i i'm so glad that it's subsidized and i would encourage anyone and everyone even if you're not an opera like the value is just like just just to say you've seen an opera for no other reason you know like just, yeah yeah no, for sure you know, also yeah. you know if you think you know like like these things are different live yeah like if you've heard opera and thought oh god there's a wailing kind of italian whatever mm. like it is very different live yeah yeah i um which i don't think you know for me modern music isn't different live <laughs> <laughs> if when it's all electronic you know even if it, you know it's coming out of speakers if it's yeah. coming out of speakers my you know, i i always I was, feel big, bit... I was never a big fan of live live pop live live like folk music traditional music jazz mm. classical fucking love it but mm. when i went to concerts of you know bands i really really like never, never really enjoyed it that's yeah. the point no, i i i feel like i'm in a minority opinion when i say this but like the best musical venues i've ever been to have been like bands i've never heard before in a pub yeah, you know, yeah. That, that's my much preferred s s setting for listening to music is just like like a small venue you know it's because it, it's it's the experience right it's not you're yeah, not there for yeah. the music because if if you were there for the music the recording studio is the best place to hear it right i.e yeah. you know a, a cd or whatever um you're there for the experience and the the vibes and yeah, no, like yeah this a, a, a folk a folk music band in a pub playing some like you know dancey mm. folk music and everybody just gets up and dances mm. like that that's the best time ever ever had in a pub you know compared yeah. to you know yeah although i'm a bit of a sucker for a good old pub quiz oh i love a pub quiz yeah. i fucking love a pub quiz i've been you know I, I don't know why at the moment i'm all into like doing these videos a lot <laughs> and i keep coming, like i'd like to do a quiz <laughs> Yeah, but like, actually, oh my god, a very, a very lo-fi game show of some sort. I think you should. I, honest to goodness, I think you should because I think you should do it for Christmas. We should That'd have it cool. as a that we should have it as a Christmas tradition. Is, I want to be a contestant because I fucking love quizzes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's 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 workshop this off off camera because yeah. I genuinely yeah. think like you. Do you remember when like we're, we're lacking some Christmas traditions? Because you remember when Hex used to do his the video thing, the best video. The yeah, best video. yeah. I really enjoyed that, and he's he's kind of drifted off of that. And... Yeah, yeah. No, I enjoyed that. Yeah, yeah. yeah like I think if you're a quiz or something, we'd be mm, sort of he told me. I think. And... Yeah, I think the reason he told me stopped it was because it was just like herding cats, like going around all. Yeah, the, no, the yeah, I heard and... the same. Yeah, yeah. And it's like. I get that, you know, it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, quiz. yeah, and it could be, we could work out a way if we live streamed it, we could, uh, we could have people participate in the chat yeah, or something. I don't know. Well, I don't know if we should have a think about that. And I, cause I like, yeah. It, yeah. I like it, yeah. yeah. Um, we've just hit the three hour. Mark. I think, I think, oh. I was, uh, yeah, very quickly. <laughs> so I ended up watching the, okay. Uh, there's a board game YouTube channel that I quite enjoy called, um, something something can't remember but they originally started off doing wrestling videos right they're quite a big rest they, they just sidelined into board game stuff and I, I watched their board game stuff for ages before i realized oh they they've got this whole other thing um and it's, they do like wrestling news and stuff but one of the things they do is a weekly they started it during covid a weekly um very low file very low production values um wrestling quiz uh, and I've I've never watched fucking I know nothing about wrestling and I've watched hundreds of episodes of this wrestling quiz because it's just <laughs> genuinely fucking entertaining. It's like it's funny. So yeah, that's that's sort of what. Yeah, yeah there's 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 quite a few. No rolls like... barred. That's the board game. No rolls barred. They're pretty. No rolls. Like, oh yeah, stuff. they've always got they've always got punny names, haven't they? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Yeah. There's three hours. Yeah. Should we wrap it up? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All I'm, right. I'm, so I'm we've got. We've got the Discord. Um, also, I wanted to say at the beginning, and maybe we should say at the beginning of the next episode, uh, Veronica Explains has brought out a song, and you can get it on Bandcamp. Yeah. And uh, it's kind of cool. I um, It's Chiptune, which is completely, like, um, sort of subverting absolutely zero expectations. But um... <laughs> <laughs> so Would but you go good. see uh, Chiptunes live? In a pub. <laughs> i mean you know chip tune sitting, chip around, kind sitting of... around the commodore 64 yeah like that's the fed versus version of folk music isn't it yeah 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 there, so there, there we go it's it's, it's our culture <laughs> it, is. <laughs> it, is. Um, it is uh so and yeah so discord um megalopolis and veronica we'll, we'll probably link the discord somewhere at some point 
Yeah, and if not, bother us on the Fediverse. We'll we'll let you know. If you solve our three riddles, you'll get into the Discord. Yeah. Or maybe we should have. Yeah, and if you want, oh uh, yeah, and we could we could use the Discord as like a question submission system. Or oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Oh, we've got to work out the. I don't know. That feels like it's open to cheating. Then I don't know. We'll work something out. Um, it's open to anyway. questions with the wrong answers. Yeah. I think we should steal them from Trivial Pursuit. Yeah. Oh, we could. Oh, we could do one round of wrong answers only, where <laughs> people vote on the funniest answer, and that's the one yeah, that wins. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Um, anyway, I'll uh, right. Anyway, yeah, we'll wrap it up, it. and I will see you folks in the next <sighs> video. Toodaloo.